Hello, I'm a PX Toy Cat, and I just spawned in the near lands, a part of every Minecraft world where terrain generation and movement both break down entirely, as you can probably see. And if everything goes according to plan, which if you're seeing this video, it hopefully has, then by the end of this video, I'll have beaten Minecraft from this, the new hardest spawn point in Minecraft. This is ridiculous on so many levels, but let's just jump straight into it, because yeah, I do believe that this is one of the biggest challenges you can undertake, and so rather than trying to cut up the challenge to the point where you really won't see what's happening, this will be pretty much everything that you can see from start to finish. I will split the challenge into the five major parts that I believe it's made up of, and you can skip around on the timeline if you want to, but you can see the entire thing right now, something I hope you appreciate. And yeah, just for fairness, this isn't my first time attempting Siva. The first time did end in my death, and so did the second time, and the third time I was pretty optimistic, but also you can always come back from a death stronger. That's how I tried to see most bad things in my life. Not this though. But then I fell in lava anyway. And so yeah, let me start by mentioning that this is a very, very hard challenge and spawning in an ancient city isn't anyone's first choice. But when you come to the near lands, mountains stop generating. And so even though other structures get much rarer, these ancient cities get much more common because they expose themselves to the surface because the entire biome just goes missing around them. Very weird stuff that happens at this point. And the other thing that's weird at this point that you've definitely noticed, and I'll just assume uh, right now that you don't know about it, the near lands, as you get further and further away from world spawn start to corrupt the way that you can move around the world uh, to the point where you actually can only move one quarter step at a time just like so. This has the big downside of meaning that I can't crouch towards the camera away from the world origin uh, on the z-axis that is to say um, because I would not go fast enough and so you can get trapped in water and all sorts of other issues can happen such as blocks falling through the world and uh, we're gonna hope that doesn't happen today but also we have no real control over it. Anyway the speaking of no real control one of the big first steps we have to make is obviously getting some wood. Finding trees down here is not very possible, but when you're lucky, you can find one of these structures, which, oh no, which if we're lucky and don't detonate <laughs> any, uh, you know, skulk shriekers, will be our source of wood, which we can use to make a bed, and hopefully that allows us to prepare for the worst. I have a big belief of, although it's very nice to uh, you know, plan for the, it, it's nice to be, you know, prepare, I, I guess like plan for the best and to believe in the best, but you also need to plan for the worst. The worst could happen at any point in time. And as <laughs> if you try this challenge yourself, you'll realize it will happen a lot. Trying to take down an ancient city as your first structure is not the way that Minecraft intended things to be. However, it does come with the slight up, oh, by the way, look at this. The, the, the near lands also lead to two defenses that you can't break for any reason. It's, it's weird. It's weird. But uh, speaking of things that are weird, um, the weird thing about Minecraft is that for all the challenge that this ancient city will give me and the warden who might follow me around, in Minecraft in general, just like when I did the spawning in the end islands, which I thought was the hardest uh, challenge I could uh, you know, encounter at the time, uh, when you spawn somewhere tricky, when you're given challenge, you're usually given reward. The more risk you go under, the more reward you get. And so in the case of this structure, sure, I might have the <laughs> most challenging mob in the game in lots of ways to face, but if I can just get past that fact, there's some good loot for me. And so, yeah, my plan is basically to avoid Skulk Shriekers as much as I can on the, you know, on the behest of getting as much diamond leggings and enchanted apples, etc. as I can. And so let's just go, I guess. That one right there, I'm not going to go for that chest right now because you get free, you know, freebies with the Skulk Shriekers per, like, life per ancient city. And so I'm just going to walk over to any chest that looks like it doesn't have one, and then open those instead. Ooh, iron leggings with fire protection, and coal, I guess. You know, Santa's visited and he's decided that I was a bad, uh, a bad boy this year. Which, you know, to be fair, I guess doing a challenge like this, oh god, and we just activated one anyway. Okay, that's fine, everything's fine. Nothing is bad. I'm just gonna go for my second chest right now, very, very slowly, and just see what happens as we walk through here. Everything is fine, right? No, no, everything's not fine. Okay, we've activated a second one. You know, my whole strategy, it's falling apart, but we did get leggings. We have got potions. This is all very good, but also very bad at the same time. Oh, okay. So we've got ourselves eight potions. That's good. That's very good. We've got ourselves half a stack of coal. Love to see it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I tried to put it in my... Uh, whatever, it's fine. Um, we've got ourselves some diamond leggings. We're just missing. Okay, I'm, I want to get out there. I don't want to freak out the Skulk Shriekers, though. So we're just going to walk this way, make a little jump, and then go up here, maybe? Yeah, honestly, if we go this way, I think there's going to be a chest there. So let's walk over to it and hope for the best. <laughs> but, um, oh gosh. Yeah, with, with a challenge like this, 
we really are trying to get as many resources. <laughs> Look how wide the lantern is. <laughs> Sorry, there's so many ridiculous things that you don't you don't notice till you're here and wide lanterns is just something I wasn't expecting So yeah, we are gonna just walk in as casually and slowly as we can Just really we, we can't crouch. Oh, we can upstairs Usefully enough and then we're gonna look around. Is there any sign of a shrieker? There's not which means free chest for me, right? Yeah, but low enchanting some leggings. I definitely don't want although they sound pretty good a name tag maybe I do have plans because uh, phase four of this challenge is going to be ridiculous. But uh, oh, yeah, just like that. We Having a horse would make it a lot better. And so having a saddle will save me a lot of pain if I can. Um, a couple of name tags just because why not? More buffalo enchantings because maybe it's important. And for now, we still have one freebie on the Skulk Shriekers. So I'm going to avoid those like they are the plague. Just slowly walk to the side as far as we can. There was one to the left of me there. And we're just going to keep on playing this like it's stealth mode. Because the further we can get with stealth mode, the better we'll do. So put these leggings on in case we do summon a warden. Maybe we should even consider crafting a bed right now. So we're covered in case of a warden death. Again, plan for the worst. Even if you're expecting the best. I'm not sure. I just know that I'm I'm, I'm excited. Uh, because this is, uh, again, I, I'm a big believer in Minecraft challenges. But like real ones. Well, open-ended challenges. That's the point of Minecraft to some extent. And uh, this one definitely is that. Do you think you can put a warden in a boat? Because if so, I might have a, a secret strategy, given that I've got this much wood. But yeah, we're gonna walk up this way. Um, I, I don't like how many skulk shriekers there are. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get this um, diamond hoe out. This might seem like a weak tool, by the way, but it has five attack damage, the same amount as a stone sword. So it's effectively a stone sword with a diamond sword's durability. Sounds like a win to me. And uh, yeah, if I get some free XP, that sounds nice. Uh, as well. However, I found my mortal enemy, water. Here's a crazy thing that doesn't sound true. Here's me trying to walk against the water. I can't do it fast enough, and so I'm trapped inside of it. I can walk that way when the water's flowing towards me, but otherwise it's, uh, like, almost a trap. Like, the game will lock me in one place in a very, very scary way. But yeah, my, my first day, my first challenge, I'm sure you will have noticed the phases in the, the chapter bar below, um, but yeah, my first challenge is basically getting to the nether. Every single Minecraft run involves going to the nether outside of very specific set seeds. 99.9999999% uh, of seeds require you to go to the nether. And so I intend to do precisely that. I'm gonna place some soul torches because they're spooky and allow me to see. And oh, they help me find diamonds. So I've got diamonds, I've got wood. I just need to get my hands on some food, maybe a golden apple or two. And uh, then we can move up the tech tree Get out of this place and into the nether where the real challenge begins. Because we're so far from world origin, 3.6 million blocks, that actually that does present a real issue. So I'm going to look around this sneakily on the outside. I'm going to place torches where I can. And I'm going to see if there's any skulk shriekers. Because if there is, I need to run in and not trigger them. Or run in and trigger them only once. Yeah, I guess we could just... Okay, let's, let's break our way in there, shall we? Um, let's place another torch right on top of that. And let's just jump up, jump up. Okay, we're in. No, I'm not. Okay, I can't, I can't get over this block. It's not because of the thing above me. It's just literally moving on this axis while jumping is very, very challenging. Nope, can't do it. For some reason, it's not possible. So we go this way instead, jump up there. And there is the chest. There is no Skulk Shriekers around it. So that's a freebie for me. Yeah, lots and lots and lots of soul torches. Plus some coal, plus some bones, which would be handy if I had any glow berries. But for now, it'll count for something. Because, yeah, the only type of food you can find in Ancient City is glow berries. And those food, you know, you don't get many of them. They don't seem like they're very good until you realize that actually they can be farmed. So I'm going to do something that seems a bit silly here. And I'm going to put lava. I'm going to put some wool in the lava. And I'm just going to, no, I'm just going to, okay, I'm going to get burned a little bit, but it's fine. Because that gets me into where the chest is. Oh no. Okay, I'm just going to break this. Or I'm not going to break it. I'm just going to walk away. And hope it doesn't notice I'm here. Okay, it doesn't. Yep, just... There's no there's no catalysts or no sensors near it. No, okay, there is. Damn it, why would you have to be like that? Okay, we're fine. We're fine. I am, I'm okay. I've got lots and lots of disc fragments. <laughs> I've got lots and lots of bones. I don't have any glow berries or any enchanted apples. But who needs them? On, oh, yes. Okay, we've got everything we need. There's been no wardens. Which means this first part of our journey is almost at an end. I'm feeling pretty good. Just have to not activate 
any more Skulk Shriekers as we now move on to the next phase of going to the Nether, which is the Tech Rush segment. So, uh, yeah, we want to go up the, you know, I like to call it the Tech Tree of Minecraft as fast as we can. I, we want to go from having wood, which is our, you know, basic starting series uh, stuff right now, up into having something a lot better. So we go from wood to stone to iron as quickly as possible. Usually this is, um, e you know, easier. You just find some iron, you make a wooden pickaxe, you mine the, you know, you mine stone with your wooden pickaxe, you mine uh, iron with your stone pickaxe, etc. It's a little bit harder because down here, even though we found diamonds, diamonds are more common than iron because of the, you know, the layers that they generate at. And so I'm thinking if I'm going to be successful, I'm going to need to find some iron higher up there somewhere, which may present an issue. Also, actually, it's night time. Let's go to sleep. I need to set the spawn anyway, and I need to sleep for a night. Double reason to just go to bed. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to uh, break enough blocks to make a stone pickaxe. Use the stone pickaxe to break enough blocks to make a furnace, uh, just while we're here anyway. And then go find some iron and hopefully smelt it using my coal. Again, there's not been a warden, so my life has not been over yet, which is always what you want to be able to say, but I I am still very much prepared for that eventuality, and I will also prepare my hotbar correctly. Like, it's got a lot of potions on there right now. Probably too many potions. Uh, so we're just gonna, we, we'll, we'll deal with this inventory once we're out there, but for now, that looks handy, and also allows me to eat, eat my glowberries in peace. Which is all a man can ever ask for sometimes, right? Okay, so now we just have to go up. Uh, you can see there's iron up there, but it's up a, a, pitch, a pit of lava. You can see there's iron over there, but there's no way up to it. Getting to iron is actually a big part of the challenge because, um, again, iron is found higher up than we are. And so we have to kind of just hope there's a random waterfall leading us up to some iron. I think over there. Oh no! 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 Okay, that's bad, that's bad. Those noises aren't good. Um, I am going to run as far away as possible before the warden spawns and hope that while he's ambling around, he just won't find me. That is not a perfect strategy, <laughs> but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes uh, to survive. Oh no, how did I activate another one immediately afterwards? Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fly up the waterfall and get away from that way. Because there is a warden spawning somewhere, I think I just saw it. But he doesn't know that he can look upwards. I'm 90% sure that his range doesn't count vertical range. And so, yeah, there he is. He has no climb up here. And so I can eat my glow berries in peace. Yeah, he, he doesn't know. The, the, both of them are frozen in place. Because they'll only be able to run where, because of the, again, the weird XZ thing. They can only run in certain ways. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage. What I'm also going to use to my advantage is the fact that I am trapped. It seems bad, but because I can't go this way, like the water won't let me, what I'm going to do instead is walk into the mountain. Is there iron here? There's iron up there. Oh. So if I could just get down into that water, I'd be good. But that seems scary, so let's instead, oh, jump onto this and then start stacking up till we get to the iron. Yep. Sounds good to me. I'd rather use slabs for this, but I'd also rather use planks than die to the warden, so... <laughs> I guess that's what we'll do. And then we'll just walk into the wall like so. It's a scary jump to make, actually. So we'll, we'll open this up so we can jump in like so. And then once we're in the wall, we can break the iron. And we'll have enough to craft ourselves a bucket. And, uh, yeah, for those of you who aren't in the... I, I'm not going to pretend everyone knows exactly how the fastest way to the nether is achieved. But once you have a bucket, if you just have water and lava, you have a nether portal. Because you can light, you can make obsidian with uh, water and lava. You can also light a portal with, uh, with water and lava. It's, it's, it's a good time, all things considered. Um, yeah, I'm very, very, very pleased with how that went. I summoned two wardens and got away from both of them with no drama whatsoever. Ah, <sighs> yeah, that feels good. That feels good. That's a, it's a big load off my chest. And assuming they're both gone, which it looks like they are, I now know where to avoid on the way back. There was a shrieker there. Oh, that's the one for the chest from earlier, actually. And then there was one near here. So I've got to get down in a way that doesn't take me that way, because that will lead me to a warden. And indeed, anywhere with lava is good for me, which is anywhere on this map. Oh, there's, there's two chests there. If I wanted an enchanted golden apple, I could just accept one warden spawn. Okay, you know what? I'm a big believer in like, you know, double it, pass it to the next person. So I'm, I am the next person. And so I'll double it and pass this to myself. Um, yeah, we're just gonna charge into this place. I've got the glowberries to recover. Charge in, break the shriekers, or just go into the chest. Yeah, just go in. 
Oh, that did not go according to plan. I activated the shriekers and now I'm trapped. Oh, I'm horribly trapped. I am horribly trapped. Oh no, no, I can't move the way I want to move. I am going to die. I have made the worst decision that anyone has ever made and I will suffer for it now. I hear the warden, he's coming for me. Why? Okay, so I'm just gonna hang out here. I'm just gonna pray I don't see a warden. Yep, we. that was a poor decision. And you can see why doubling it is a bad idea. Also, you can see just how many shriekers there are next to that chest. But if I could just go in there, if I could just accept there were free shriekers. But yeah, we, we've we now played with risk enough for my own liking. I can, if I just find some water, make myself a furnace. And it looks like there's plenty of water nearby. I just have to swim up one of these and get it. So yeah, let's do it. And in fact, there's diamonds over there. Plus there was a diamond earlier. That's two diamonds. That's a diamond sword. Let's do the ultimate tech rush. Um, you know, I, 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 basically, Minecraft tech is, some people will make like a wooden, you know, like a wooden pickaxe and then a wooden whatever else, and they, they'll, they'll make everything wood, then they'll make everything stone, everything iron, etc. I'm a believer and get as far up the tree as you can, in my case iron, and then start making tools. And in the case of a sword, given that I've already got a pretty reliable stone sword here, yes, the warden's gone. I can hear the noises, they're good. But in the case of the... Uh, in, in the case of, uh, you know, like iron, I don't really need an iron sword at all. And so I can function pretty well with that one. So, yeah, that's that's good. Everything is good for me. I'm feeling pretty relaxed given that I'm in the Warden's Nest in a giant ravine 200 blocks deep. So, you know, uh, things could be worse. That's that's always a good reminder. Also, let's make a, uh, let's make a bucket out of this iron. It's not useful to me if it's not curved that way. And if we just get one piece of water, we can go to the nether, which is exciting, right? Um, yeah, that is a slightly less short water to climb, but this one doesn't look like it has a shrieker in it. So let's go that way and hope that I'm right about that. And if I'm wrong, then I haven't fought that far ahead yet. Oh, okay. I knew I hadn't fought that far ahead. So given that I've already summoned a water, there is a limit to the number of water it's not two. Um, but let's just go this way anyway, right? And then let's let's accept that we've already summoned a warden. And so how much worse can it get? Oh, I'm trapped in water. That's how much worse. Oh, he's, so he's right there. He's right there. There's the chest. Okay, lots of bones. Lots of bones. This is bad. I'm out of here. I don't want this. Oh, Lord. Okay, we, we have to place some blocks um, this way, basically. Please let me place them. Why aren't you letting me place blocks right now? Is it the skull? Um, and then we're going to just... Go this way. No! Okay. I'm out here. I'm out here. He can't see me, and I'm just gonna swim up this waterfall before he notices anything and just take whatever water is causing this. No! Okay, that's bad for me, I think. Um, that is definitely bad for me. I'm just gonna break my way through this wall. Uh, get out of there. Uh, he's gonna attack me again if I'm not careful. Because, uh, yeah, the warden tries to avoid you getting away from him. But hopefully he can't see me through here. Uh, and hopefully I've got enough potions, actually. Yeah, that's that seems like a good plan. Potion uh, plus glowberry. His sonic his sonic attacks only do so much damage. I've got decent leggings. I might just be able to survive this one. <laughs> it's not a good life strategy, but I think I just avoided the warden by being in a tall enough waterfall. I don't know how that was a valid strategy, but consider it next time you uh next time you think the warden's terrifying. Just remember his biggest nemesis is waterfalls. It's also my biggest nemesis though, so you know I can't I can't really, you know, talk meanly about him too much. Because I've also summoned that. Oh he's gone! Yeah! See, I don't know where I am right now. It's very dark, it's very confusing. But I did just defeat a warden. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself, honestly. Um better than I should be feeling. So I just want to get back up. It's I can't <laughs> do you see this? Like, because of the XZ thing, I literally cannot jump this way. I want to. There we go. I'm up. And now we're just going to climb back towards where we came from and uh, hope that we don't summon another warden. <laughs> I think the risk of getting an enchanted golden apple just isn't worth it at this point. I think I've proven that enough to myself that I don't need to prove it anymore. But I did get a lot of bones. Bones are really, really, really good um, in my current predicament. And if you don't know why, let me show you. Here are glowberries. Here are bones. I make a stack of bones into a stack of glowberries. And now I've got food 
for me and forever. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really handy thing that bones basically turn into free glow berries if you've already got glow berries, which is the best underground food. If you ever are running out of glow berries, always save one just so you can emergency do this at the last minute because yeah, it's, it's a handy little technique. One stack of bone meal, one stack of glow berries. It's a very fair exchange rate. Right? It's, you know, none of this like go into a village and getting, uh, you know, two iron blocks in exchange for 64 emeralds. You know, I, the, the game believes in fair exchange rates when you do it the real way. But yeah, let's let's keep mining back out to where the water was and hope that this time we can get some. Yeah, I didn't think, I, I figured the moment I like settled down effectively, I was safe. But it, it does not appear that way immediately. There is lava right next to my water too. Oh, and there's an enderman. <laughs> that would be handy later. But right now, let's, that's kind of fearful. Um, that's kind of fear inducing at least. So we're just gonna go up that way. Yeah, there's water right up there. So we should have to get as far into the water as we can. I don't know what just happened there, but I I can't swim upwards. I can't, has <laughs> it drowned me or? Okay, I'm just gonna, did I look at the Enderman? I did not, he's just having fun. We're gonna try that again. Uh, water physics do not work in the near lands. If we just accept that and move on, you'll have less questions. Because right now the way I can and can't move, doesn't make sense to anyone or anything. It just exists the way that it exists. And we, we have to hope that it continues to exist in a way that doesn't kill me. But yeah, there's also more iron up here. Could make some armor. Yeah, actually, I could make some armor. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So I'll scoop the water up and then place some down that. Oh no, 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 I shouldn't have done that. So I'll scoop the water up, then immediately place, um, then immediately place a block for me, uh, right there and then stack up with the block, get the iron really quickly, and then jump into the water because it takes a while to deplete. That's a ballsy strategy, it sounds like, but water does take a long time, and mining four blocks doesn't. And so, just like that, jump in. And we can even end up on top of the structure, if we want to. Do I want to? Yeah, I mean, it seems safer. I'm gonna take full damage later, but now is not later. Um, so yeah, if we can just bridge over that without activating a skulk sensor, that would be nice. Can I do it? Um, no, I'm not gonna try. <laughs> there are skulk sensors everywhere around here. Um, okay, we didn't activate a skulk shrieker yet. And as you can see, everything is fine. So far. So far, no issues. Is that gonna continue? Let's certainly hope so. Because I'm trapped in water now, so if there was a skulk shrieker, I'd be dead. Okay, just keep going forwards. Get down, get down, and there we go. We're back at my temporary base of operations. I would love to make an iron pickaxe and go for some diamonds right now, but I do think I'd be better off with just an iron chest plate. Just something strong and sturdy to keep me going in the nether. Um, but yeah, for now, pretty decent. And I also am going to... I, I think I'm going to have to make a like place for my water to flow into. That's always kind of tricky to do. From up here, we want like a big wall, basically. If we don't have a big wall, we'll place... Uh, is there blocks below this block? Yeah, there is. So if we just place some blocks there and there, and then one over there, and then break these blocks, now the water will just naturally flow into that, I hope. Maybe um, just to be safe, we'll remove that, and then place another block of these down here, and also over there and there. Perfect. Okay, so... Now when we place the water down, it will stick in there. Don't ask me why this water just flows onto nothing. It, it works. We don't question it. And we start replacing that, and we've caused chaos. Okay, there goes my strategy. Oh no, and I'm trapped in here now. Very bad. Very, very bad. So now, we accept that we've made an absolute mess of everything that we know. And we take our water, and we leap. You know, there's nothing telling me that I have to have my water here. And so I'm just going to break my furnace and get out of here and try that again somewhere else. This is a this is a little bit of a dangerous place. And if it's not working in my favor, I'm just going to leave and make a better nether portal somewhere else. If I die on the way to that nether portal, that would serve me right for... Oh, there's, there's a skulk shrieker there and one over here. I don't want to go either of these directions, but I must. And so I shall. Is that really all of my cobblestone or my deep slate gone already? I guess it is. So run across here. Everything's fine. And then run across here. Everything is fine, still. 
uh, switch out to the wood. Uh, one of the lucky things about this is even though so many things about the world break this bar out, like going to a stronghold, it's going to take thousands and thousands of blocks, if not tens of thousands. Um, lots of things break this bar out in the world, but one of the things that doesn't is the deep dark biome is prohibiting all other mobs from spawning. So even though it's nighttime, I don't feel as horrific as I could right now. So that's, you know, that's the one good piece of news right now. The other good piece of news is that I haven't summoned a warden in a while. I haven't even activated a shrieker. And it looks like it might just stay that way. Ouch, that was <laughs> almost very smart. So here's my other crafting table and my bed. Let's sleep here and let's see if we can't make a decent nether portal somewhere. Indeed, let's just take this area right here, this big wall. Uh, dig, dig a couple of blocks down below it. Should be nice and easy. And then put the water right in here. Is that going to work? Yeah, it is. So, there is lava around here somewhere. Oh, it's so far away. This is this is a long journey to do for lava every time we need it. Yeah, you know, I, I know I'm being very picky here. But again, I want to make a good nether portal. It's I'm going to have to go in and out of it at least a few times. So, making sure it's safe, but also easy to make. Uh, they're, they're two important considerations. So, although maybe this one is as good as we're getting. Maybe, maybe that is as good as things get here. So, jump over that. Place, uh, yeah, right over here would be fine. We're, we're a little bit closer to the the lava. We can just walk backwards and forwards, and yeah, that's that's fine. So place a torch there and there, just a bit of spookiness around the area. Place a big lava uh, water bucket up top, and now we focus on. Oh, see, things went weirdly there. We'll remove a couple of blocks just around, just to make sure the water flows somewhere that isn't my lava, and we'll just start grabbing it block by block and placing it very much the same block by block. This is easy, and it works for now. <laughs> oh yeah, I've I've got this real fear in my right now. I, I don't know, don't know if you feel this too, chat. Um, you, I called you chat. You're very clearly a video audience. Would love to pretend uh, you are my chat right now, uh, but you're not. You're, you're my second best. I'm, I'm I'm just kidding here. But um, I think the okay. So I'm gonna place lava down there, and I'm gonna just move the water back one block because it has to be up there clearly. Yeah, I guess there's a there's an overhang that I wasn't accounting for. Oh, that makes that makes much more sense. So we're just slowly gonna place lava around it and hope that it fills into the right holes and not the wrong holes. It's a big challenge. It's uh, something something that all, always faces us in this world. But uh, at some point, life is just always a game about putting the right things in the right places. And today, I want to make sure that I do my bit. And it looks like. It's going well enough so far, right? It looks like we've got seven obsidian. Oh, and then that happens. I have no idea how. Did you see how I just did that? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to eat. I'm fine. I'm going to survive. I'm going to get in the water even. I should have gotten in the water earlier. Always put out lava when you can. But yeah, I'm going to be careful about that happening again. I don't know what happened or how, but that was scary, and I did not like it. So now we've just got to put the corner pieces on. So we're going to jump up uh, over here. And we're just going to place a corner piece as easily as we can. Should be no issue. It is an issue, though. Oh, no. Okay. So, yeah. The, the movement around this world makes a lot of things challenging. This is not one of the things I accounted for. But place that there. And then one more. If I can just get out of this water. Oh, no. I'm going to drown in this water. Okay. I'm not going to drown. That's the good news. The bad news is I'm trapped here. I'm going to have to break through blocks to get out of this. <laughs> Let me out. I'm trapped. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, there we go. We're out now. That's the good news. That is scary. I could actually forcibly drown myself if I'm not careful. It's not something you expect to have to think, but it is something you should expect to expect to have to think, clearly. Okay, then we're going to place the water over here, because it is useful. Get one more lava. Okay, this is exciting. I am about to go to the nether. I'm about to have defeated this first big hurdle, the one that has held me back. Can I go to the nether in a... Uh, in a world uh, that is in the near lands? The answer seems to be yes. But, again, there's, there's, there's time for me to die still. So yeah, lighting the wood on fire causes the portal to be lit on fire, like, tangentially. This can work on both Java and Bedrock, but as mentioned, this is Bedrock, which uh, makes it just a little bit easier. And then we'll place the lava bucket we've just gathered over there, for now. We'll place our furnace down. I No, actually, we won't place the furnace down. And we'll do a tiny inventory clear up before we go to the nether. Like, do we need the deep slate bricks? No. Do we need the curse of vanishing leggings? No. 
Projectile protection for probably not. Uh, protection and mending. Well, that is slightly better than just protection, but not really. Uh, pro fire protection and mending, also no. But we'll keep it around. Everything that we don't possibly need right now, we're getting rid of. Uh, five discs of- <laughs> seven discs of five, we don't need it. Just so we can go into the nether with as clear of a mind as possible. I need to be ready, on a moment's notice by the way, to just start making- uh, to start eating or drinking my potions. And also I need to make sure that I take my uh, iron, which I've just crafted, and I get myself an iron pickaxe. That is more important than a chest plate, so we'll just make a helmet with the rest maybe. Uh, this is my armor set, and this is my tool set going into the nether. Oh, also a shield would be incredibly handy. This is what I've got going into the nether. Can I survive? Let's find out because yeah, we're moving into our second phase of the plan. A long, long trek to the structures. How will that go? Let's find out. Well, I wouldn't describe this as being off to a good start. This is in fact the worst nether biome and the reason why I need so many of these potions if I don't want to die a tragic death to a skeleton. Does that one not even have a bow? Yeah, he doesn't. He's just hanging out. With a, okay, there is a bow. Anyway, so uh, we have to make sure we get to a fortress, which could be very, very far away. Fortresses are not only double as rare on J Bedrock as Java for no good reason, but also there seems to be a weird inconsistency as you get further from spawn about how often you can find anything. And so all of our good techniques go out the window, and instead we have a long journey ahead of us. I hope one that you're willing to come with me for, because yeah, this is going to take some doing. We've got a little bit of armor, we've got some food, uh, a decent amount of it, and I've got the ability to regenerate quickly from any disastrously bad situation, but not much otherwise. And also, I have to mine through the world right now, because there's literally no other choice. So let's start mining up, I guess. Yeah, looking over there, I want to be up on top of this uh, biome. It's going to be painful, but at some point, you just have to do what you have to do in Minecraft, and sometimes that leads you in weird directions. Also, you'll notice that now that we're in the nether, things are, like I said, about a quarter less broken, but there's still some really weird things. Do you see how the world is moving? This isn't a weird camera recording stutter. This is how Minecraft just is. And uh, I'm hoping we can get past that because we've got a long journey ahead, like I said. And um, the most important thing is basically not to give up. I find one of the most demotivating things about the nether is you generally don't know when you're going to find something. You're relying on RNG of structure spawning, and especially at this distance, you're relying on RNG of structure spawning that doesn't even follow any logical rules necessarily. But we're just gonna keep believing, keep staying strong, and also doing something important, which is storing my coordinates. Uh, so I'm gonna write right now 203 455 366. At this point in the world, I should not get lost. So 203, um, that's coordinate number one. Coordinate number two is 455 356. 455. 455-366. This is a really important thing when you're playing by yourself to make sure that you know uh, where to go to get back in. Also, we've got two endermen here. That could be something useful, but I'm going to assume we get a better source of ender pearls than just two random guys hanging around here. So let's keep on going this way. In fact, let's let's go... Oh, yeah, let's go through the cave a bit more where we won't die. And let's deliberately mine upwards to the, the upper level where we want to be. I do see there is stuff there, and so it's worth going for. Um, the Nether is a dark and scary place filled with lots of mobs that want to kill you. But the secret to it all is if you just have a decent pickaxe, uh, you can usually avoid most of the big problems. Um, because when you're behind, when, you know, when you're in these tunnels, mobs generally don't spawn. An Enderman can't get in here. A Magma Cube can't spawn here. A Gas can't spawn here. All of the Nether mobs that are scary, besides... I guess a blaze and to some extent a regular skeleton. Um, all of the scary never mobs have weird sizes, which means they can't bother you. So yeah, now I've got a way back. Oh, okay, we got we we just have to do it. We just have to go. Wait to deflect our first arrow, then charge and then deflect. Oh, didn't do that correctly. Deflect and then charge and then deflect and then charge and then he's dead. Okay, so that is going to allow me to get a bow and some arrows eventually, but we do have to. Do a big inventory organization. I've got 11 planks, but I think it's worth doing some amount of effort with that just to make sure that we... Yeah, if we, you know, I, I can't make a chest or anything. Yeah, we can't make a chest, so I'm just gonna dump some unnecessary blocks. I will need the Neverack later. I won't need the soul soil. And I'm gonna be realistic myself. I won't need the wool either. So if we get rid of that and also get rid of the second best leggings and the compass... 
and also 20 coal. <laughs> it's harsh, but we need to do it. And then we'll just throw the bottles of experience on ourselves. That should give me a nice leg up on this world. Hopefully. Just a little bit of extra inventory space. Inventory management is my, my least strong suit. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend I'm good at it. But it is something that we need to do to be successful today. So I'm now going to charge down another... No, I'm not. I'm going to heal up first, actually. And then as he comes towards me, he's going to fire. And when he misses his next shot, I'm going to run past him. And in we go. Go! Oh, okay. So three hits if we get at least one critical. Not bad, actually. And also, we're picking up bones, which is food to heal up with. So this could be a lot worse. And we are... Again, we want to traverse the nether as much as we can. And uh, we'll place some... Some soul torches as we go as, like, lighting, if nothing else. Um, but we just want to get as much distance covered as fast as we can. I will have to make a few risky decisions. But there is a, you know, there's a trade-off to not. If you get bogged down, especially in a bedrock never where mobs spawn everywhere. If you get bogged down in a piece of combat for too long, that can be much more disastrous for your health than just... Oh, there we go. Dead. Okay. Um, yeah, if we spend too much long killing ghasts, more ghasts will spawn. In fact, I think I heard the second ghast. Yep, no, that was the that was the first ghast. He just didn't make the animation. Um, <laughs> that's brutal, huh? Um, and yeah, in these situations, I need to be fully aware of what's around me and why. And also, I need to start crafting... Uh, I need to craft myself some gold boots now. I cannot be chased by piglins forever. And I also shouldn't just kill them. So I guess we'll kill you, specifically. Just you. Um, but everyone else, I'm going to have to get done the regular way. So let's just... Those two patches of gold... That should be good enough for me to make boots. Um, in the nether, I, I used to be a big believer that, like, do you really need to stop piglins? But there's a whole category of mob that will just avoid you altogether if you wear slightly worse armor. And in my case, it's not even worse armor because I have no boots. So wear some version of some armor and you can prevent a big tragedy. That seems like a fair trade-off to my hearts. Also, we now have exactly enough. So throw this on the ground. I like to do inventory management this way. If you've got something temporary you know you're going to make, just... Oh, no. What did I just make? Okay, I made cold ingots again. Um, if you've got something temporary you're going to make and then you want to pick something up later, drop it on the ground and then it'll fill that exact same spot. I think that's handy, personally. But yeah, now we are at four, five... We've got 100 or 200 blocks, but we've got a lot longer to go. And this isn't going to leave me there. So we can even mine through the tunnel. Uh, probably not going to work at this uh, distance. Or we can look for something better. I think up there... I see, I see something. Is it just a cave leading me nowhere? I think it might be. Yeah, it's a cave going to nowhere. So at this point, we could get out of the cave and try again. And at some point, you have to stop doing this. But right now, we're early days. We can change direction or we can look for a better way through this direction. We just want to see as much of the never as possible. Because to find structures, you just need to see more never. It's, uh, it's a simple strategy. But down there, I'm not going to find anything. I mean, I could... I could jump a bunch of layers down, actually. That that might not be a terrible idea. Let's let's do it. Let's jump down. Uh, that skeleton is scary. This is very scary. Everything that's happening right now is very scary. I'm going to drink the regen while I can, safely. That is why I wanted to have regen. It's precisely this situation. Um, even with the regeneration, I'm still healing very slowly. I could still be murked to death. Um, and I think I just need a bug, honestly. I think... Oh, I'm going to get gasted non-stop if I'm not careful. Maybe that's a sign that we shouldn't go through the soul sand valley and we should stick to our guts and just continue going forwards. We'll eventually hit another biome that isn't terrible if we do that. And so, should we just... Or should we go that way? Yeah, that way looks a little bit more open. Not much more, but we'll do it anyway just because we get a little bit further before we hit a dead end. And a little bit further might make a big difference if I can uh, believe. So speaking of believing... We're going to go just through here, I guess. Just just start mining, see where it takes me. I will eventually run out of this iron pickaxe, and I, I don't have a viable plan to replace it. If I found some blackstone, that would be something, but I don't have any, and I don't even really have the sticks for much. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, for now, just enjoy that we have a spare inventory slot that's been brought on by this. Fill it with a bow that will break in two shots. And then eat some glowberries, because this, this food is bad, but it will do the job. Um, when you have very little in Minecraft, I think it's important to alter your behavior slightly. And basically, you know, I, I think this is true for many parts of life as well. Like, when you find yourself at a disadvantage, if you continue at the exact same behavior you would do if you didn't have a disadvantage, you'll just extend that same disadvantage a little bit further. Something you ideally are not trying to do, I think. 
Um, and so, speaking of disadvantage, um, that is bad. Let's turn right here. <laughs> um, speaking of extending a disadvantage, I think um, you, generally speaking, want to play things safer when you have less so that you can eventually get more without dying. Also, we are going to be out of this stone pickaxe soon, which I desperately needed if I was going to uh, get some blackstone and make a stone pickaxe later. So now I'm relying on never loot or gold to make a pickaxe. A gold pickaxe will be worthless to me. And breaking of my fist. Oh! <laughs> yes! I was just about to give up. I was going to be that meme. You know the one of the guy mining through the tunnel? And then there's a, you know, oh, this is one of those rare edits in this video. You need to know that meme. Uh, I, I was going to be the guy. I was so close to what I wanted to find. And I, I, I'm so glad I did not give up. I am so, so glad. Because now we have wood. In fact, so much wood that I might just give up on these Star Coke planks and replace it exclusively with this new stuff. Because boy, is this exciting. Oh, what a treat. Oh, speaking of treat, I hear a ghast still. I don't see a ghast, but I hear one. Oh, from up there. Wow, that was that was a real shock right there. So, um, yeah, I'm going to run through this whole biome, knowing that the only thing I'm going to find is going to be ghasts. Or rather, uh, Enderman. I, I have ghasts on the mind because I'm scared of them. This is a very safe biome until it's not. There is a real risk that an Enderman hits me, I die, and getting back here will be painful. And so how do I avoid that? Well, simply put, I mean, I guess you could say I don't, but... <laughs> simply put, I stay at max health, I need the max time, and I get ready to crouch and shield... Oh, the moment that it seems it might be relevant. Those two things alone will make a big difference. I'm also going to cover up as much lava as I can. Pro tip, you can just... You can stop lava spills in the nether. You just have to do something like that. And you'll, you'll contain so much more pain. Um, yeah, make the place as safe as possible. And I would even say, to go a step further, we can make little hidey holes here and there. Just places that I can guarantee my safety. Also, yeah, look how weird it is. Just, It's not as broken as we were a second ago. But it's very weird how broken it is. Look, look at the movement. It just doesn't make any sense. But we've got a solid 400 blocks now. And um, ultimately, all we found is a dwarf forest. I was hoping but we could at least find a bastion or something, but yeah, no sign of that. No sign of a fortress even. But we can head up there, and then we'll get a good view, and if we don't find anything, we can just head right back down. So let's do precisely that. We've got too much nevrak anyway. Uh, I won't be getting any more, so I'll still be careful with it. Like, I, I'll try to not waste it, but we, we don't need to be that careful. Because here we are, we found Enderman. That is, that is really cool, honestly. In fact, there's so many Endermen here. I'd be silly not to break them with my, my fist or my, my, my hoe. Have I, by the time I do this, they'll be gone. But basically, uh, getting Ender Pearls, there's a safe way and a dangerous way. And right now, according to my resources, I think I should do the safe way. I don't even have an iron pickaxe. I've got so many Endermen right here. Um, so many Endermen that it just seems silly of me not to. Um, go out there, look at him. Okay, we, we want to look at as many Endermen as we can from my secret little hole here. And we're going to kill them using a diamond hoe. Um, it's, it might sound bad for the diamond hoe, but I think I have a spare one, right? Yeah, I've got a whole spare hoe, so we can kill as many endermen as it takes. And we can guarantee one of our slots will be saved by these ender pearls, which right now it's not being. By these ender pearls, uh, if we can kill the other enderman, that is. I don't know where they went. I feel like they were so mad at me just a second ago. And then they stopped caring about me just afterwards. Okay, finish you off. Or maybe I didn't hurt you at all. Okay, second enderman. This, this is a really good spot. Usually this biome is the one place you don't find mobs spawning a bunch. But two ender pearls, it's a good start to an end. Uh, a never. I mean, it's a good start to getting to the end. We're only on part two of our journey so far, though. Um, so yeah, part two is all about the journey. And sometimes, I, I swear, I've spent two hours looking and not find a single structure in the never. Um, you really are rolling the dice on your luck here. Uh, but while we consider what we should do about that, I think a good intermediate step... Okay, I want to want to look at that enderman over there. <laughs> a good intermediate step is to... Uh, okay, over there. You, come fight me. A good intermediate step is what we're doing right now, which is just, you know, getting some resources that we see. Even if I have ender piles and no blaze rods and I have to travel 10,000 blocks, having the ender piles now can help me you know, bridge a gap later if I need to, or something like that. Because throwing ender pearls is one of the best ways to travel. If it didn't damage you and take up a valuable resource, we would do it all the time. Like, imagine imagine walking around your world when you can ender pearl. If I had ender pearls in real life, I'd use them all the time. Like, two and a half hearts in Minecraft, what would that be? Like, uh, 
breaking a leg, but in exchange you get to teleport. Maybe that sounds like a bad deal. You know, if someone punched me really hard in, the, in my shoulder, like three times, but I got to magically, you know, like go over a hundred meters, that would be, I, I would take that power. Also, this is a dangerous biome. So I am going to proceed through it just in case there's a good view on the other side. But I am going to proceed with absolute caution. A magma cube can hit you twice per second. Um, other mobs, they have a cooldown time. You know, like all games, you can't be damaged too quickly. Magma cubes go through that cooldown time because screw you. Uh, you shouldn't be near magma cubes is I think the, the internal game logic. And so, yeah, we're just going to cross this biome. I've gone over 600 blocks and not found anything. But I think in, in situations like this, it's a thing we say a lot when I when I stream. But I I think keeping your expectations tiny so you won't be whiny is a is a very real thing. If the if you expect nothing, then anything is a nice surprise. If you expect everything, then you know, the the best you can be is have your expectations met. Whereas having your expectations exceeded is one of the best feelings. Um I, I'm having my expectations exceeded uh, by this run and its loot. Whereas if I just thought, like, oh, I figured I'd be in and out, in an hour, I'd be done by now. Um, then obviously, trying to start in the hardest place wouldn't work so well. Um, although I guess I should talk a little bit about that. Like, I I, I, I do like um, challenges a lot. It's something I do all the time on this channel. I, I, I like real challenges too. Like, so many people um, think that the easiest way out of a challenge is like, oh yeah, well you jump in creator. Or uh, the modern day version of that is, well you go back to an earlier version and then you give yourself the effective ooh, equivalent of cheating. Um, I am dead. I am so dead. I'm getting back. I'm just walking down. I'm just going to avoid all the pain. And I'm going to hide in, in the corner here. Or I could stack up, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. Smart idea. How to get away from magma cubes. Stack up before they can get me. Before they can get me. Not after they can get me. And we just have to bridge before the gas gets me too. And now all of the magma cubes are gone. Whew. Yeah, verticality doesn't just work in PvP. Ouch. Doesn't, doesn't work here, though. Oh, I'm in a bad situation. I've got no healing, and I've got some missing hearts, and I've just got one regen potion on my hotbar, but I am making it through this. Yeah, I think uh, I, I like challenges that actually require you to do more or harder things in the game. That, that to me, is the idea of a challenge. Um... And I, I like anything that encourages people to do the same. Also, I think I think I just saw a Bastion down there. I think. I could be wrong. I'm going to have to come back after the Magma Cubes are gone, because this is terrifying. Um, but I think we just saw a Bastion. I, I've been wrong before. Also, look, there's a random F on the ground here. I know it's meant to be a fossil on its side or something, but still looks kind of goofy, right? Okay, so good news is Magma Cubes can't get me, and I'm going to heal up entirely before I go back there. And also, if there are magma cubes following me, they've spawned here, and they're less likely to spawn there. There is a... Uh, the game tries not to spawn too many mobs, if you've already got some. Uh, the extra bad news is there is a ghast there. So, I'm going to take the 26 Nevrak, and I'm just going to... die? Yeah, I need I need to get through that. I need to do it. So, I'm just going to. Uh, sometimes... <laughs> sometimes you have a big fear, and you don't know the exact specifics, but you know that if you... If you plan a way out, and you plan a plan B for your way out failing, then you'll be just fine. So in this case, that plan is simple. I'm going to place a bunch of blocks over here, and make it so... Yeah, that is a bastion, right? It's uh, I No, that could just be the well gen. It's so square, though. It's so square. Um, so we can get some more enderpearls. Again, I've got four, and I don't have a way to get the rest of our iron. So we'll go in anyway. See what we get. And I, I, I'm, I'm mostly happy to have found a place that I can call home. Uh, I'm not happy of the fact that I'm breaking blocks with my fist. <laughs> it's not my not my dream way of doing this. I'm also not happy of the fact that if I fall, I will die. And this is a mob where... This is a biome where mobs will spawn specifically because they want you to fall. In fact, should we just jump down like five blocks? Yeah, let's do a controlled fall. This is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, when you're in a biome that looks like you will die if you fall, try to fall in a way where you won't die if you fall. Uh, by doing it slowly and in, you know, decent intervals. And as you get closer to the bottom, you get much more manageable gaps. As long as you don't accidentally incite some magma cubes, we're going to jump over to that. Then jump down, then jump down, then jump down, all the way down until we get to... Oh, it's not a, it's not a bastion! It's a fortress! Oh, yes! Only, what is that? Only a thousand blocks? Uh, maybe a little bit over? 
Um, if this was, you know, in, in a normal challenge, um, I would be like, you know, I feel like a thousand is a little bit on the high end. But given that we're out here, that feels good. That feels good. Uh, I kept my expectations small. And now all I had to do was traverse 20 minutes to find it. That was, a, again, I, I think this would be a whole big part of the journey, the voyage. But apparently not. So I'm now going to stack up again. I have to be a little cautious about this, because what if a gas comes? So I'm going to eat while I'm up here, while looking around intently on every other side. And we just have to get over there without being ghasted. I mean, uh, blazed. Um, there is magma below me, which is very scary and intimidating. So we're just going to walk into here and see if this cave has some answers for me. Uh, I don't know what answers I'm expecting. But I just want an easy way over there that doesn't involve me getting, you know, disastrously hurt on the way. Uh, I don't know that I'm finding that. Oh, actually, wait, wait. Yeah, I think I found something like that. So now we just build a wall there so the blaze can't see me. And we bridge over the gap. Yeah, I'm going to use the soul soil just because I've got it. And it's an inventory space that I need to free up for a big challenge. Then I'm going to place some blocks from the ceiling down. <laughs> yeah, look, this is this is genius. And then we just have to make a big jump. Oh, he's running towards me. Wow, that is bizarre. Um... I do have a bow. I do have two arrows. For the sake of my sanity, maybe we just do this, you know? Maybe we just... Oh, that wasn't that wasn't very good sanity. I just achieved right there. Um, I'm going to build a proper bridge. And I'm going to get out of there. And I'm going to tell myself that I should have killed more skeletons earlier. Because I'm, I'm getting lit on fire. But that's fine. I like being lit. Um, so that is another blaze right there. And there's a big gap between them where there's fire. So we want to make this as safe as possible for me. But also not doable for other mobs. How do we do that? We put some guardrails on, first of all. Very important. Just a good guardrail or two will go a big distance. And then we are going to build up two blocks high. Yep, see, that's good. And then we're going to make it so that the mobs can't climb up from over there. And instead they have to make a jump, which only I can do. And then also we're going to build more blocks there. So that there's only one way through. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm a big believer in use blocks to your advantage. Oh, he, he followed me. Wasn't expecting that fully, but that's fine. I've got a stone sword, which only takes four hits to kill a blaze. Um, wish I had invested in that diamond sword. It would make a big difference right now. Um, yeah, I, I think one of the most powerful things you have in Minecraft is blocks. Like, people use blocks basically exclusively, you know, to get around sometimes. And then also they use them as a way to... Uh, very, you know, make make a nice little build. But I think the most powerful thing blocks can do is allow for combat to be made easier. You can control the engagement. You can decide how you fight this with a skeleton. You don't have to run barefaced into a scary structure because I control that he's over there. And every time he wants to get to me, he has to go in a certain way that I decide. Uh, same with this next mob. Use the blocks to make sure that he can't light himself on fire till he gets closer. And by that time, he's already dead. And basically by redesigning the structure to our preferences, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, like a disability ramps. If you redesign a structure so it's better for you, uh, you can enjoy it. No, no, no longer uh, do disabled people have to jump out of the wheelchair, gain the leg strength, walk up some stairs, then, you know, ask someone to bring their chair up with them, as I'm sure happened all the time. Uh, but instead, you just use the ramp. And uh, in the same way, uh, we are effectively, also I think I wanted to get those skeletons uh, or those arrows. In the same way, we are roaming through this structure, making it as safe as possible, making sure it's OSHA compliant, where that is uh, doable. So, you are going to die. You're going to give me an arrow or two. You could really do with one of them. And, oh, perfect. <laughs> Killed with uh, reflective damage. I'm going to check on my shield because it is taking a big beating, but it's, been, it's doing just fine. It's doing great. And we're going to kill the Wither Skeleton. Same thing. He can charge towards me all he likes. But this is an de environment designed for me. If you think about it, like, um, the idea of, like, nesting or, like, decorating a house is doing the same. You can, an apartment building has, like, a hundred random units in it. Uh, the one I was staying in in Vegas had, I think, 200. that were basically all exactly the same. Uh, there are a few different, you know, there's, like, four floor plans. But all apartments are basically the same. And then you change it to fit your desires and preferences. Do you want a big TV? 
that's great. Do you want to make it so that when you step in the door, there's a, you know, like a thing telling you to get something done? Great. The idea of uh, the side is something I talk about all the time. It's like this British concept of like, just a surface where you could dump some stuff when you enter a house. So it's where random stuff ends up being, your keys, your wallet, etc. Um, we, you know, like that is a thing that we build into our home so that when you enter, you put the stuff that's been bothering you to the side and then you can focus on what you do care about. It's uh, redesigning spaces so they fit your needs is a not that revolutionary idea, um, but it is a very satisfying one. Also, we are specifically in this part of the fortress, not with the blaze spawners, which is nice, but we're here specifically to find loot. If I could find some iron, I could make an iron pickaxe and that could help me in my, oh, my quest to get some uh, ender pearls. Things are going suspiciously well right now. And so I, I, my, my instinct is to think I'm doing so well. I don't have to worry about anything. And so my goal is to kind of counter that instinct. Also gold. Okay, it's not what I was hoping for, but it'll do. Uh, as you can see, stone sword, five attack damage. Diamond hoe, five attack damage, but better. And so we throw away the stone uh, just for now. You know, later, later maybe, maybe there's some value in grabbing that stone sword. But right now I've got two diamond hoes. It will last me forever. Like I will be killing the ender dragon with a with a a, a, a a diamond hoe. If you're watching this video, if you're not, then oops, sorry. Uh, apologies to future me. Um, that is one of the downsides of doing videos, honestly. Again, like I actually want to make interesting challenges that you look at and maybe would want to do for yourself. Is that sometimes <laughs> we go all the way through it and I'm like, oh yeah, this wasn't a this wasn't a good challenge. This is undoable. Uh, and it's, it's an awkward moment, but it does happen. Also, yeah, I can now make a diamond sword. So maybe when I said that diamond hoe thing, I, I must have made a mistake. I hope you didn't skip forward to the end to check and then get disappointed with me. Because <laughs> I found diamonds. I'm feeling good about that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just craft that right now. An iron pickaxe probably is more important, funnily enough. Yeah, an iron pickaxe is more important. But then we'll use the rest of these um, to make... 12 sticks, and then just throw away the plank. Because I... Yeah, it's a random inventory space for basically nothing. So let's just get rid of it. And now we can make the diamond sword, which we so crave. And I could also make some gold leggings or something. But I think I'd rather wait for something better than that. And now we go into the rest of the fortress. Potions would be nice. Um, but we've got so many potions covered that we don't even need to worry about this. This is the great thing about the ancient city. One of the great later game challenges. It's just been solved for me. Oh, what? I crouched. What? what? I wonder why that didn't count. <laughs> also, wow. <laughs> they are mad with each other. Uh, that is for sure. So yeah, hopefully we got some arrows from that. And hopefully we can find just a few more pieces of iron. And if so, we can make ourselves some iron leggings. Or not leggings. Chest plate. <laughs> I can't believe it's the chest plate I'm missing. Oh, see, that is what I mean when I say you can get complacent and your complacency will get you killed. Um, that is a scary, scary, scary hit. One, one wither skeleton and now I'm, you know, like halfway to death. It's a bad time, but it's, it's a real time. But yeah, I, um, I think it's worth doing what I do because enough people see it and then are motivated and have that fun Minecraft challenge experience. I hope, I, I believe, I, <laughs> I, I think like anyone, like if you don't doubt yourself ever, I, I, I don't think you're accurately reflecting. Like, you, also, oh, we, we've been here. This is this is all the same fortress. It's just tying around into a loop now. So I guess we'll just go kill Blazes the normal way. Or we could we could check the last of the, the corridors we haven't seen yet. Just in case, right? Also, I need to eat. I, I can't just have two. Oh, I see, for that reason. That is the reason I need to eat. That is the reason. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, if someone came from behind me right now, I'd be dead. I would just be dead. Um... So that's, that's the bad news, is that exact same thing happened. I'm running out of blocks. I'm running out of blocks. I have to build up and just make myself a little box. Oh, okay. Um, that is the lesson in complacency that I am learning <laughs> first hand. Ah, it's scary. Um, so I've got uh, four arrows now. And I do have a regen potion. But I'm going to, again, I, I should be less complacent with using these. Because that, that could have saved my life, but I just drank one when I was on lower health there rather than waiting. But yeah, I need to think very seriously each time I have lower health about what I, I'm going to do. So I'm going to kill this skeleton here now. Don't know where he's gone. I just, I, where, where did he go? <laughs> How did he... Did he just walk away? Where Where is he now? 
Is he is is that is that is that all I'm gonna see from that skeleton again? Also look, oh it's a uh, base salt delta. I guess that's how I should have known it wasn't a um I could have probably worked out it wasn't a bastion earlier based on that. But still, I mean it's it's a good place. Oh, I am man, I I got trapped in such an awkward, <laughs> awful way earlier. And I am I'm I'm feeling the, the nerves from it. But yeah, I can get out there easily. I'll get the blaze rods I need on the way out, hopefully. Like if he gives me one, he won't. Very rude. If he gives me one, uh, and then, you know, if everyone just gives me one, we can do like a contribution based system. I'm gonna just drink a potion right now. See, this is a situation where maybe having one of those would go well for me. Eat one of these two, eat another one of these. And then that, just extra bit of confidence for killing these blazers might go a long way. See, I'm getting burnt right now. It doesn't matter because I'm killing blazers. And uh, yeah, looking at my health, it's staying, staying maxed out. I love to see it. Um, but yeah, we just want those last two blazers. In fact, we'll go for more. We're going to throw a lot of fire vendors, and a lot of them are going to vanish into the ground. So, um, again, one of the big challenges of part three is I don't know how many of the fire vendors you need. On a normal world, you just say, yeah, I need 10 if you're being really optimistic, 12 if you're being uh, a little bit cautious, and maybe like 13, 14 to cover like the worst case scenarios that will make you come back to the never. But with the... Um, in the case of, uh, I, I think it's worth, sorry, I'm, I'm focusing a lot. Um, in, in the case of this run, my eye offenders will vanish into the ground if I'm not careful. Oh, I should, I've, got, I've got to watch out for this. And being careful is not uh, an easy thing for me. It doesn't come easy. It does take a lot of like training into myself. I would rather just run gung-ho into something, uh, which is a bad personality characteristic, according to some. It will. It, it creates more fun situations. Though. So I mean, you know, everyone else wins. It's just me who loses. So now I need to find the outside part of the fortress, which is to say where the blaze spawners are. It must be down that way that I came earlier. So if I can just kill this with a skeleton. In fact, there's already blazers here. I probably can just mine down to them if I'm careful. Oh, also I need to get a regen potion out on my hot bar and ready to go. I don't know why I don't already have that, but I need to have that. Oh yeah, there's a there's a way down right over here. So just build another one of these, another escape route for myself, and see if we don't find a spawner. Because there definitely will be one. Okay, that's that's too many mobs. It's too many mobs, too many mobs. Um, and then just make sure they stay down there until we kill them. You want to come get me? You're going to die. I'm just, okay, gave him fair warning. And then he wants to come get me, but he's also going to die. And then we're going to seal off this entrance, make it, again, human accessible, not with a skeleton accessible, if we can. So yeah, we're just gonna get as many blaze rods as makes human sense. Like six, se seven would be the minimum I would consider, but I, I could need 10. So if I just get 10 now, I'll save future me a lot of pain. And so to do that in the safest way, I'm going to make sure I make this as safe as possible now before I get lit on fire. And I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna lure him in and kill him one by one. Ooh, and then in we go again. That is now eight blaze rods. Two more blaze rods. Maybe a... Sp <laughs> oh, God. Okay, yeah. Maybe maybe just two more. I was going to say get a spare safety one, but maybe if it's going this poorly, that doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, ten. I'll get ten, and if three more spawn again and it scares me, I can run out and I'll be fine. Oh, three spawned again and it's scary. Oh, using the wrong tool. Oh, and I'm also not killing them all. You've got to commit to one blaze at a time. That's my technique. That should be enough. 12 blaze rods. If I need more than 24 eye offenders, then the challenge is functionally impossible anyway. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to waste a lot of eye offenders. A lot of them from the cracks. I'm now covered for those eventualities. I would like to think. I would very much like to think. I'm uh, going to pick up some skeleton arrows, because they are easier to get here. Although, I guess I can get more on the way home. I don't think I'll want them for the dragon. Although, yeah, I guess for the dragon we would want some arrows, right? Yeah, the arrows for the dragon. Makes sense to me. Now we've just got to get back to where I was before, because um, on the way back to home, which is 203, 455, 366, on the way back home is where we're going to find, um, on the way back home is where we're going to find Ender Pearls. I could probably go for a Bastion anyway, but also I'm running out of blueberries. I need to, I need to do my little, my little thing soon, which is to say, convert my bones into food. It sucks that there isn't good food in the nether, at least not in the biomes I've been through. 
But, you know, I try I try not to be a negative Nelly all the time. And so, bone mill time. Yeah, so many bone mills. So many glow berries. I do, I do love that the Nether gives you everything you need to get free food if you just come with one ingredient. It's just a hard ingredient for many people to bring. I, I, I understand why. It's a... Uh, it's uh, it's not the most common form of food because by the time you're in a cave anyway, most people don't care about blueberry. By the time you're in an ancient city, usually outside of this very weird <laughs> specific situation, but by the time you're in a cave, why? Uh, by the time you're in an ancient city, why would you take the glowberries unless you just want the prettiness? But I'm not sure that's where most people make their their Minecraft decisions. So I think I came through here. I'm pretty sure. Um, there's a Strider there. He's so cute, and I do have a spare saddle. No, I don't. Okay. Can't can't tame you, buddy. I love you. I it's the cutest mob in Minecraft. He he's the reason that makes Minecraft worth beating. Like, at some point you've got a question, why are you playing Minecraft? And the answer is always the strider. But yeah, at some point you do have to question like, what is it that you enjoy from the game? What is it that you if, if there's something that you are missing that you maybe had at some point but not now, what is that thing and how do you get it back? Um I think that's a question people more often ask themselves in couples therapy uh, than about Minecraft. But you know what? I, I think it's a valuable question to ask about Minecraft anyway. Um, if there's any game that you've loved so much and then stopped loving at some point, it is worth questioning at least a little bit. Like, okay, was it the game that changed or was it me? If so, is there something I can do to get that back? Because, you know, I think the thing that changes about most people in Minecraft is you start being used to how you play the game to the point where it's not as much of a challenge on a mechanic level, but it's a challenge on a what should I build level. Like, oh, should I build a, a triangle house? Should I follow a tutorial from this guy or that guy? Or, you know, you stop making a challenge of the game and you start building your own challenges at the top. I think I came from down there. Yep, I must have. Thank God for these bridges I made. They are a godsend in helping me get back home. <laughs> um, getting lost in the never is a very real concern. You know, it, it happens to you enough times and then you start writing down those coordinates and you learn a new lesson, by the way. Which is part of the fun of updates, right? Like, one of the reasons I think so many people like them, one of the reasons I cover update news on this channel, is because, like, you know, you can you can reinvent the never by giving yourself a challenge within there, but also Minecraft can reinvent it. And it is fun when they do. It's very fun when they do, I, I, I would say. Um, also, yeah, we, we're doing well. I'm doing real well, except for Ender Pearls. But outside of that, things are good. I'm I'm enjoying life. I've got I've got spare food, spare potions. I think the only thing that would really destroy me right now is a a a, a fall in some lava. I definitely can't deal with. Also, I shouldn't be saying that out loud. I'm I'm too close to too much lava to be talking about it this casually. Um, so I'm gonna eat some food while I evaluate what to do about this guy, and then I'm gonna just run around him. And then run down. I don't think I went this far down. I think I'm going to lose the... Oh, no. I did come this far down. Wow. <laughs> Thank God for past me in the Neverack. Always use a block which isn't from the biome you're in. Sounds like good advice, actually. Because then you'll always know if you've been somewhere or haven't been. Like, you can pretend that you know the way you're going perfectly. But in high-stress situations especially, getting lost is so much easier. This is the way back, right? Over there is back to... Yes! Okay. Okay. So, part three is going well. Um, my, I've still got my real insecurities about step four, but I can make those insecurities less by doing well in this part. So, basically, I just have to uh, get enough ender pearls. Like, I don't want to get twenty-four ender pearls, but if we get like eight or something, if we get like I don't know, like twenty or fifteen, like a, a bunch of spares then I'll feel relatively secure knowing that basically anything could happen. Also, see, there were so many Endermen here earlier, and now there's not. I'm glad I killed Endermen while I could, but also I'm worried about how I'm going to kill as many as I need to. So let's jump down. Yeah, it was a really good decision to go mining through that never earlier. I got the blocks that I... Oh, okay, this is scary. That's scary. That's bad. Um, I'm, in the, I'm in the cave now, though. You can't hurt me here. I can hurt him, though. So yeah, we want to just target as many endermen in a place where they won't teleport away. Because if you have terrain above you, they always teleport up there, and it causes issues for you down there. And there's two more endermen now, but same issue will just happen again and again. So I'm going to build my own little fort next to that tree there. That is my plan. This tree is going to become a fort. No, not at the... Okay, okay, okay. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, 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 I can't sprint because... Oh, I could not get my bearings on sprinting. 
solely because I was being I, it was it was brutal. I think that's why a lot of people bind, bind it to a key. Maybe I think I would have if I was just slightly less helped. That would have ended me. Would have been my end. So let's go out again. And let's try that. Oh, he's still- where? Where? Where from, friend? How- I didn't see him waiting for me. Okay, is that you again? That's you again. Okay, so I got the ender pearl. For, for all of that work, I feel like I do deserve it. <laughs> Not to be too too frank about this. Um, but yeah, that was a- uh... See, like, he's, he's gone until I come down. Oh, he's waiting outside. That's what's happening. Ah, so I need to place this block down. I don't really need it. And get my third regen potion out. These are lifesavers, let me tell you. Or at least time savers. If you find a nice corner to retreat in, glow berries will heal you up just fine. Oh, <laughs> that was scary. That was a jump scare if I've ever seen one. Um, so yeah, we're just going to build ourselves a little safe fort over here. Um, and make it in such a way that one or two blocks going missing cannot ruin it. Okay. And then we'll also build it with a, a little guard around it. And that way... Yeah, that, that that now, it's if it's like this, I can see mobs through various gaps that they can't get to me through. So now we can go start... Now we can start looking at Enderman from everywhere. I'm also going to remove this block. Because back there, I should be able to see Enderman, who I can then anger. And if they're smart, they'll come this way around. Uh, I guess we might have to remove a block, maybe? Because I don't know where he is right now. Oh, there he is. And then we have to look at that guy. Come on, friend. I want, I want to look at you. I'm trying my best. And now we just want to go grind on some endermen, basically. It's not a phrase you expect to hear in a Minecraft video, but we're going to really get as many of their goodies as we can. Just really, really maximize this. Okay, there's one down there. Just stare them all in the eyes. Kill them all in the faces. <laughs> and live our best possible life. You too. Yeah, you're coming. It's happening. Yeah, ender pearl for me. So I'm actually going to go, I'm going to use this opportunity to keep this in my slot. Just so I can keep an eye on how many I have. Like, I think, I think that is important as well as like, um, fun is motivation. Like, working on something big and something challenging can, I, I think I, I would put it this way. It's challenge in life. Oh, I'm getting beat hard. Challenge in life can be broken if it's something is too challenging. Uh, and if something's not challenging enough. And I guess I've been focusing a lot on like, yeah, it can be boring if you know exactly what you're going to do before you do it. But also it can be boring or at least unengaging if something's so hard that you think you're not making it. And so if I ever feel beaten down by these endermen in ways I don't know if I can do much about it, seeing that ender pole camp go up is my motivation to get through this. Um, that and uh, I made some, some, some noodles yesterday. Some, uh, some mushroom style, like uh, Asian noodles. And uh, they're in the fridge waiting for me right now. I had a little hunger spout. And you know what? I'm going to think about those. Every time I think this is undoable, I'm just going to realize, you know, there's, there's food. But few, me has got future me covered. Also, I've got two guys to look at. Look at them both. And then get back in the hole. And then maybe eat some more glow berries. I'm going to have to by the time I've healed, I'm sure. Yep. Also, where have they gone? Oh, there they are. Yeah, this is really weird the way the mobs are deciding to work. If I can say so myself. But again, we're picking up ender pearls. Even when things don't make sense, I am making progress. Doesn't matter what the endermen are up to. They, they can do their whole own thing. But I am going to come out of here with 15 plus ender pearls. And honestly, this seems like it's faster than if I was going for a bastion. Like, especially if I had a bastion already, I could maybe trade for the ender pearls faster. But with the current trading, because I, I play modern Minecraft versions. That's another, see, that's an example of like, uh, but yeah, I, I think a lot of people like older versions because they have, you know, they, they haven't fixed things that they used to enjoy. But that's an example of solving a challenge by just going back to when the challenge wasn't there. And it's like, well, that's not actually how you solve problems, right? You can't, you can't solve all your problems by pretending they don't exist. Although, yeah, maybe you can. Maybe, maybe I'm the weird one for thinking you can't. Or see, so yeah, just go grab that. Oh, yeah, I, I need to heal up. Maybe just drink the, the potion. Maybe just drink the potion, right? Just get it done, and then we'd be happy. Oh, <laughs> scary location. Yeah, if I, if, I, if I drink the potion, I would feel more secure right now. Maybe that's an important feeling too. But yeah, I, I, I tend to find that solving, solving new problems is more interesting than solving the same problem again uh, the exact same way. 
and just finding out different ways to get to that same solution. Which is why I like that Minecraft is putting so much effort into new ways to get ender pearls, basically, right? You can trade for them, you can barter for them, you can kill endermen for them. There's a whole biome for them. I'm in it right now, right? I love that they're working in all these solutions to the same problem, because now your Minecraft run gets more unique. I think that's that's a thing Minecraft updates can focus on really well, is giving you more options to do the same stuff, so that there are more things to do. There's an argument that it kind of... There's an interesting thing about by diluting people's Minecraft experiences, by making them more unique, you make them less the same, obviously. But interestingly, that means that people feel less like they're playing the same game. Like, people who do Redstone are always so disconnected from the rest of the community. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, I I play Minecraft, but I, I do it as like an electrical engineering game. Whereas I'm playing Minecraft like, yeah, I want challenges. Like, a, a new super flat generator or well generator makes a huge difference to me. Whereas the one who plays Redstone, it's like, what, so I can build my weird contraptions in a slightly different looking world? I don't, I'm not, I'm not excited about that. Um, and indeed, for someone who, like, likes playing marketplace maps, or maybe, you know, is involved with those, it's like, oh, so now there's less reason to play those. It's, it, it, it's interesting how, when you get a community as big as this, it's the same thing as, like, big countries. No matter what university positive decision you try to implement, there are some people who hate that decision because it has some tiny negative on them, and they don't experience the positive. Um, it's, a, it's a problem we have in the real world too often, like the idea of, uh, I, I think we call it like a NIMBY, right? Like, that re really liking the idea of good things, but just not wanting to be affected by it in any way possible. It would be nice if I, I could just have all the good things in life, but none of the downsides. If, if, can anyone make that happen for me? It's, uh, it's an understandable concern. Like, I, I, I think we're all trying to solve at some point the issue of uh, a finite number of a finite amount of time but an infinite number of needs we all have more needs than time or resources to solve them and how we solve that is kind of down to ourselves it's, it's a hard one to solve but we do our best and so my minecraft version is by solving my need for an infinite number of ender pals the more i have the more secure i feel but also i have a limit to the amount of time i'm not i'm not a limit but i i have a realistic you know like amount of time i should be spending here before I conclude that I'm wasting time to potentially save time, if that makes any sense. I, if, you're save, if you're wasting real time to save potential time, at some point, that trade becomes bad value. And I'm hoping after this Enderman, we'll call 16 pearls a day. It's a stack of pearls, which feels like the perfect amount to make into eye offenders, right? A perfect stack. Although for some reason, do you want to know a weird fact? Okay, you know, I, I have to get 17 actually. I want to show you this one, because I feel like if you just say it out loud, it sounds almost unbelievable, but it's, uh, it's a good fact, let me tell you that. So, I'm going to put this stack in my inventory, and I'm just going to get one more eye offender, or one more ender pearl, rather. Uh, look at both of those guys, and then jump over here and kill them. Um, so, yeah, you can only stack ender pearls up to 16, and the logic behind them is they're circular. Circular objects in Minecraft stack up to 16. Spawn eggs, regular eggs, snowballs... <laughs> <laughs> Why is it true? Don't 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 question it. It's it's how it works. So squares fit up to 64 in your inventory, but circles only go up to 60. And so, as you can see, that ender pearl was a different stack. It will not go up the previous one. But if I was to make some eye offenders, 17 perhaps, it fits in one slot. Why is that true? <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you. I think I kind of want an actual ender pearl as well now though for the end. Or at least I'll get I'll get some more arrows. No, I think I no I can get I can get an ender pearl in the end if I needed one there. Okay, no, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Um, I guess I'm getting a spare ender pearl now by accident. <laughs> it's um I'm also gonna get myself a bunch of wood while we're here. I'm gonna want blocks at some point. I must be prepared for that outcome now, rather than later. And I've got some gold. I could use it to make a gold axe. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm clearly not trading with any piglins. And so, let's go for it. No never bricks needed, no mushrooms needed, no warp fungus needed. And so, let's chop down some trees using a brand new golden axe. It's going to be fun. Look, look at this. I'm going to gonna craft my... I'm going to feel like such a weird, weird person. I, I feel like it's so rare anyone ever has to craft gold tools. But being able to say you did it and actually had value from it makes this run worthwhile all by itself. <laughs> Isn't this just satisfying? Yeah, look at me. So, yeah, I, I think we have basically finished part three now. And the only question is, can we make it back to the portal? 
Uh, it's kind of the, the finishing of both the pr previous two parts together. If we don't make it back to our portal in one piece, then everything we've just achieved becomes worthless. If I can't get to the overworld such that I can find my end portal, then all of this had no meaning anyway. And it's a scary potential outcome, I'm willing to admit. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to make sure it doesn't become a real outcome. How will I do that? Well, first things first, clean up the inventory. If you can't clean your inventory, then can you clean anything? Second things is we're going to... Oh, man, my... Look at the bow. It's got... I, it's not going to survive 11 arrows. So we're going to go find some arrows on the way back to the portal. Oh, there's just so much garbage in this biome. Uh, we'll pick up some more of these roots just because they're nice. And, oh, I can use them for the end, actually. Uh, if I've got all the bones, I'll use them with the, the yeah, yeah, okay. So, this I, these warped roots are going to come in very handy later. They might even come in handy right now. I've not got much Nevrak left. So, maybe instead of ambling around aimlessly, I could do something fun with that. My coordinates I'm going back to, I've forgotten. 203 and 366. So, 203 is this way. Uh, and 306 is, like, that way. So I just have to find the way that I came into this biome. And I I think it was over here somewhere. I, I recall it being, like, back there, though. I, I recall coming into it from a weird angle. There was definitely a tunnel that I mined through. And by not stop... Oh, here we go. Yeah. I'll place torches in case future me needs this. <laughs> but for now, I am doing wonderful. I'm going to heal up because I am about to go into a gauntlet of skeletons. And I could even do of getting more glowberries, but we'll do it in the overworld. I also have to worry about phantoms. I, I've been here now three full nights. Going back to... The, if phantoms work in the Nearlands, which is a genuine question, I will have to fear them. If they don't work, then no fear required. <laughs> good, good, good life rule right there. Okay, so I, I think I know the rest of the way. I think we go across the Soul Sand Valley, and I should be able to find my way out of this. I think, funnily enough, this is uh, this is one of those times where I generally didn't need those coordinates. But I'm saying that after having looked at them twice. Maybe I'd be a lot more confused and lost if I hadn't. Like, even the small guidance can help you with your big... You know, like, I, I think it's easy to write off something you used and feel like you didn't need. Uh, much easier... Even if you don't use something, just having it makes you feel more secure, I find. Which is my whole point of having these enderpearls. I might, it might be that the stronghold is literally in the ancient city and I just didn't see it. But even in that case, uh, it'll be fine. Also, there are my blocks from earlier, which means I came through here, right? Clearly, I must have. I don't remember doing this, but is this my tunnel that leads back to those coordinates? Yeah, it must be. So I should kill more skeletons. 12 arrows is not enough, and I don't have... I guess we'll do it on this side. I, I want to be as close to my home as possible, because when I'm out of this, I want to be really out of this, you know? So we're gonna close that off. It's just too scary. I don't want mobs coming in here. And we're gonna go back into the, the, the frying pan, the scary field of skeletons, because I need a bow that doesn't suck. I could find a bow that doesn't suck, but... Ooh. Yeah, you know what? Should we just... Okay, no, there's a ghast. Is that enough for message not to? I think it is a decent one. Um, let's go. I'm gonna eat some more while there's no ghast attacking me. I think I got a bow there, right? I did not get a bow. Um, so I'm gonna kill you. Go. Okay, that was great. I wouldn't know if I picked up a bow, but there we go. Second bow. Okay, so we now have our bow problem sorted. Um, skeletons drop bows at abnormal rates in the nether. I have no idea what's the cause behind it. But two of these together should give me, yeah, something when they combine. And that will be enough to shoot my 13 arrows, which I just have to hope is enough. Uh, for the end of this. So, yeah, this, assuming I don't die in the next minute, it looks like my phase three, part three of my plan, is going according to, all according to the, oh, no, I'm lost. Okay, never mind. Uh, this way? Nope, yep, diagonally. Okay, so I, I don't want to count my chickens before they've hatched. You know, I'm, I very much am in the business of waiting until you have a full hatching process. But even with my incomplete armor set, I'm coming back to the overworld, and I'm ready for what is going to have to be the hardest bit. Like, the end can't be too different on this world. I haven't tested. I should have tested, but I haven't tested what it looks like. I'm sure it's going to be the same. But the journey to the stronghold, that is going to be a ridiculous one. If, again, I I really hope my my previous world I looked on, a different set of coordinates, there were strongholds out there, 
I'm hoping the same is true here. But the only way to know for sure is to go through and see what awaits us on the other side. Because phase two and three are complete. Let's go into phase four. So I'm using this never portal as a seamless transition to say that, okay, I actually went and took a break just to go eat my noodles. They were really good. They gave me all the nourishment that I'm going to need to get out of this. Although I can't get out of the portal. And uh, yeah, just in case you're curious, I am now back. Look, here, here's me. I got myself a chili flavored soda or pop. It's actually kombucha. Looks very good. Very exciting. And will keep me fueled up and ready to go. I'll remove myself. No one wants to see a person while they're playing Minecraft. Um, I, I've got myself all fueled up for the final part of this journey. I'm excited for part five of this, where I think I can take down the dragon just fine. I, I, I feel like I've got above average odds on that one. But what I'm not excited for, at least quite so much, is uh, the journey on the way there. Getting out of this place is going to be one thing. In fact, it's going to be a big thing. I should probably bring my bed, in fact, by the way, uh, if we can... Uh, head over there, that seems like a good idea. But getting out of here will be one big challenge by itself. But even beyond that, going to the end portal is going to be a long journey. I really do imagine the... I, I don't know if the eye vendors will work correctly or what's going on there. I hope so. Um, but even if they work correctly, they might point me to somewhere that is thousands and thousands and thousands of blocks away. I might be traveling for a bit. So, you know, I'm strapped in for the journey. I think having a drink is always important for moments like this. Just something fun uh, to refresh your palate. And uh, yeah, my, my Minecraft version of that is I am uh, ready very much to face the things we're going to see on the way. I'm hoping we can maybe do a bit of Nearlands tourism. I think it'll be fun to see some weird things out here. Also, that is a Skulk Shrieker. Let's watch out. Um, I've watched out perfectly. So yeah, as long as we walk along this, we'll be fine. And as long as we uh, get up to the surface soon, we'll also do great. I would rather not use the blocks that I've just taken from the nether. I, I can't climb the ladder for some reason. Um, and so instead, we've got to look for one of these waterfalls that goes all the way up. That goes to there. That goes to there. That goes to... I, I imagine, actually, those mountains are probably good. So I'm going to walk into that waterfall there. Oh, okay. Yep, I guess, I guess so. Let's just walk into that now. I, I have to check before I go up it that it is going to work, and I just have to make sure I don't activate a warden, or if I do, I get out of there very soon after. So, yeah, that to me looks like a valid way out, and so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna run. I'm gonna ignore any wardens that I hear. Yep, that's a warden, but not for me. And we're gonna jump in here, and no, oh, I'm trapped! Okay, we're gonna climb sideways over to that. I think the warden timer might have reset but I'm still not going to chance it. I'm going to eat my glowberries and consider myself very lucky uh, to be out there with basically no injuries, right? No no warden, no problems. So, yeah, and, and in fact, this water is working great. Usually water is, again, it's my nemesis. You've, you've seen it, but um, today it's been working with me. I'm, I'm going up the side of it like it's a very handy ladder. In fact, not being able to move might be in my benefit. I wouldn't go that far, but still. We just have to now work out how to get from this. Oh, there's even a, there's a staircase for me. How perfect. So now I am out of the hole. It's such a big hole, by the way. I was down there for the first, you know, 20 minutes of this challenge. Um, <laughs> very, very quirky. Oh, no, no. I just put myself back in. Okay, I can't even be mad. This is all on me. Um, so, yeah, my movement being broken is something I really need to readjust to. And also the amount of gold here. This, that could, I could have bartered with piglins just using this one wall and done so much good work. Honestly, look how much there is. It's so easily exposed. But yeah, let's uh, climb up onto, I don't even know. See, this is actually a big aquifer. It's not a way out. But I guess if we walk over there, that might be a way out. Um, I don't want to be just underneath some mountains. Oh, are we trapped? No, we can swim. We can swim. I hope. I can't swim. Why can't I swim? <laughs> Um, well, that's a problem, huh? Uh, for some reason, swimming is disabled. Or maybe we have to swim this way? Yeah, we can start swimming on the left-right axis and then move on to the slow one later. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah, swimming does not like to work. But I'm just, I'm going to accept that it is how it is. And I'm also going to accept that we are going to do some nerve-wracking things to get out there. But that looks like an exit to me. And so I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to... In fact, let's just stack up. I've got some Nevrak. I would rather not use it. But I, if I need to, then it's better to use Nevrak than the warp wood. And we can always chop down trees on the way. <laughs> would have just been instant death if that had gone too far. Um, okay, yeah, this is scary, actually. I don't I don't love this. I'm just going to walk this way. 
walk back that way, walk back that way. Watch out for this because that red sand is about to fall. Okay, yep, it's, oh, there's so much of it. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. And then uh, walk onto this, walk onto this. Just, it, it's so painful to get off this island. Um, I guess we're actually gonna climb up onto that. Uh, I'm gonna break this block because I really don't want to do it. I, I don't want to rely on any amount of jumping that makes me go over big gaps where I might die. Losing everything to a dumb jump in lava would make me feel bad. And honestly, would make me feel like I wasted some time. Um, ignoring the, the personal fault of, you know, not achieving something big like this. I, I think feeling bad is a good enough reason not to do some things in life sometimes. So one more block and then I think... No, no, we're still, we're still in the, in the mess. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. Oh, yes! We are out. It is over. And now, uh, the first thing we do is we find a nice clear ground. We want to get some nice round coordinates that we can borrow later. So, in this case, 965, we can take down to 950. And in this case, 364, 3321. We'll take that down to 364, 33. I don't want that to go in the void. We'll just take it up to 350, I guess. 350 is a nice round number to go. My 950. So once we've got those two coordinates squared up, we're going to fire an eye offender. Ooh, that's that's scary there, but I'm sure it won't go through. So let's go. And I'm sure it will go this way, in fact, where everything is safe. So let's go. Okay. Nope. Okay. Oh, it went through. Why did I have to say no? Okay. So that went over from 950, 350 to about 964, 348. So it's going... About two blocks that way. Uh, for every 14 blocks it goes this way. That's an angle of 7 to 1. Basically what we're trying to do right now is not just work out what direction to go. Which is that way but very slightly. But also if I could be... If I can do it. Uh, I'd like to do a tiny bit of maths here. So I know this is boring. But this is an important lesson. If you ever are thousands of blocks away from a stronghold. You can throw eye offenders and just keep following the path. Or... You can do the much more useful thing, in my opinion, of realizing that eye offenders are just straight line paths to the stronghold. And so any two lines that aren't at the same angle will always intersect at some point if they're on the same plane. Like, the, that, that's that's just the nature of how straight lines work. And so if... Oh, I don't want to go down there again. Let's go back out of here. And so if two straight lines will always intersect, knowing where they'll intersect will tell you exactly where the stronghold is just from the angles of the lines and their start points. And so we know the start points. One of them at least. We don't know the other one yet, but we, we know that we will know the start point. And so all we have to do is use that and, oh god, this is such a messy biome. What's, <laughs> what has happened here? I thought the Nearlands just caused some biomes to go missing, but they caused some other ones to become wet, apparently. But that's fine. We're getting out. There's no more issues for me. One, two, three, four, five. Is that enough? Oh, it, it is. I can just do this jump here. I'm not going to trust myself to do it. I'll just break the sand, place the sand, and then let's go back over that way. Just look at this. I, I really feel like a Nearlands tourist today, um, but I, I'm, I'm glad I am. I, I, I do have to say so. So now we're going to take 950, 350 and compare it to 950, I don't know, like 150, let's say, if we can. If we can't, then it's fine. And by just knowing where two straight lines are starting from, uh, if this one goes that way, but slightly, we know that it's, you know, that way, and we know a better starting point, basically, right? And if it goes that way, by some miracle, then we'll know that the stronghold is in between the two. If it goes an entirely different direction, then something is broken, and we'll just follow the, the line that seems more fun. <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping not that one. So 950 is impossible to get to until we go way further back on this coordinate, which is fine to me. I, I have the time... I'm, I think it's it's worth spending a little bit of time to save a little bit of time, or a lot of time in this case. So 950, 050. Oh, there's another one of these in my way, and I just know it's going to go into it again. But uh, make sure it's perfectly lined up. Throw eye offender. And, oh, it's going, like, basically straight, right? Oh, and it broke. Okay, so that's going very slightly right. So I imagine that means that the stronghold, uh, in fact... We could use the maths of like, well, that went about 14 blocks forwards for two blocks left. This one went basically forwards. So for every 700 blocks we go forwards, it's two blocks left. There's 300 blocks between the two. So about 2100, if not slightly... Sli 2100 is a good base before we throw another eye offender. We walk in a straight line this way for at least 2000 blocks. We'll just say in case my maths is off. And then we'll find a eye offender. I, I know that's confusing. Hopefully my very vague... 
diagram from from before explains to you at least the maths I'm trying to do. Don't know if I got it right though. Uh, what is important to get right in Minecraft, sometimes at least, is uh, knowing... Uh, you know, by the way, I was going to make a point that like, look how ridiculous this looks. There are just random pillars everywhere, even over there. I assumed we'd get some normal terrain at some point. I was hoping we would even, like uh, a good boat would be fun, right? Just going on a little boat journey, see how things work there. Although maybe we don't want to go on a boat for the first time in a world like this, but it's fine. In fact, will mobs spawn on the surface? I assume they will, but I don't know. <laughs> I've got a lot of questions. But yeah, we're trying to stay at 364-3050. Probably slightly to the right of that, based on the... The eye the fender didn't go perfectly straight. It went nearly perfectly straight. But as long as we had... At, in fact, I'll just bring it up to 3075 or something. Uh, we'll, we'll walk right and left as we need to. But if we do that, we'll be great. Yeah, do hostile mobs spawn at all? Is it just not possible for them to physically root down? It's dark, but I see no mobs. Um, I mean, I, I, I know for a fact, because I saw a ghast, that we're not playing on Peaceful. <laughs> It'd be funny though, right? Getting to the end and being like, oh, with ga ga game seems to be a little unbeatable. Although I guess actually the end isn't unbeatable. Nope, there's a skeleton. And uh, okay, there's a lot of mobs. They just all spawn in one place. And can they get towards me is the true question. So I'm over here, which is the good direction if the skeleton did want to get me. So yeah, we now know that we should go to sleep. I'm 99% sure that it's fine to. I don't. I can't think of a good reason not to besides phantoms. And do we want phantoms? No, we don't have potions. So let's go. To oh no! I said I don't want phantoms. I specifically gave you one <laughs> request, Minecraft. But yeah, look how weird the camera works. Um, and yeah, when we get to the stronghold, if we do... I'm going to use the, um, I'm obviously going to use my bed as a way to set a spawn point, should the worst happen. But I think we're going on a chill journey now. So that we've, uh, as, as we move into the real meat of phase four, the, the, the adventure, as we go to at least 3,000 X and probably much further. Because I always find that my calculations underestimate things by half, if not more. So, um, yeah, if I'm really lucky, 2,000 blocks, we're in a real good situation. If we're really unlucky, it's still probably less than 10,000. So, we've got a close by stronghold, not by real, you know, measurements, but by near lands measurements. I feel like that's great. Uh, and so, all we have to do now is make it there. Can I do it in one piece? I would like to run, but the game really doesn't like it when I do for some reason. <laughs> like, I'm just, <laughs> it, it, it just won't let me run and also go left slightly without really, really breaking things. So instead I'll walk perfectly between these blocks, because then I can jump if there is a block, but also ignore it if there's not. Yeah, that, that's good. And then eat a glow berry every now and then, just for sanity. Oh, nope. Just for good sanity. Um, and also, let's, let's see some weird stuff. I don't want to look in any of the holes, just in case it leads to my death. But I am so curious about what works fine here. Like, also look at the rabbit. He can't, he can't. <laughs> okay, so rabbits are a lot easier to kill. In fact, I think there's quite a few things that get easier out here. Not the sorts of things that necessarily help you beat Minecraft. Uh, besides maybe, you know, the ancient city is a big boon. It's big risk, big reward. But I think ultimately, if I'm, if I'm objectively measuring this, I'm saying that it's really, really messy and it's hard to play. But there are, there are ways in which the game is handicapped too. Which means that actually it might be a fun enough challenge if you can get past this whole dumb movement thing. Like, <laughs> I just want to go this way. Um, if you can get past the movement, I think this challenge uh, is real fun. Also, yeah, we've already traveled a thousand blocks. That's cool. Um, it looks like my boat dreams won't come true. But again, it's probably smart not to get in a boat. Also smart not to trade with him. And uh, also smart to realize that when you're going on a long journey in Minecraft, I think a lot of people get this feeling of like, oh man, it's so far that I have to travel. You know, if you do like a, are we there yet mentality. But I think the cool thing about travel that I always try to keep in mind is like, the journey is a fun thing by itself. Going between places, even, you know, when it's between two places with nothing interesting in between, nothing is interesting in its own way. In this case, we're just going through a forest biome, right? It's, there's nothing unique about it. There's no giant holes in the ground. But it still is a unique enough experience, partially because I have to play weirdly to dodge to the right and left. 
And I think having this like appreciation that everything you go through is unique in its own way. Obviously, the things I want to bring my camera for, the things I'll be uh, snapshotting and making sure that I see later, those exist too. Uh, I, I'm hoping we see some more insane uh, generation before we get to the stronghold. But it's also worth saying that, yeah, the even though we have this natural instinct to only take pictures of the most beautiful things, a lot of the most boring things are also beautiful and interesting. Also, look, there are two villages, and they're about a thousand blocks away. So what I'll do is I'll get over there, I'll throw the eye fender between them, and then we, if we're, if we're really lucky, if this, if I have hyped this up and all it turns out to be is uh, a small journey that big, then I feel very relieved, all my problems go away. And uh, we, we instead start talking about, I don't know, what, what do you talk about when, when your Minecraft goes fine? You go, oh yeah, so I, I feel like the recent Minecraft update sure is an update that you can play. Honestly, uh, it, it's funny. One of the things I've realized is, uh, you know, we, we're kind of talking about... Uh, I talk about updates like a, a fair amount on this channel. Um, because they are one of the things that really give me excitement about Minecraft. It's, it's fun to find goofy stuff like this inside the game that was programmed accidentally. But it's also fun when things are programmed intentionally. You know, call me crazy. And one of the things I realize about the whole update discussion is that there are some people who are actively just looking for something to hate. Something new happens, and they don't, don't, don't like new things. And it's a, it's a shame to me because I think that one of the few things we should all agree on as a species is that progress is good. I, you know, like, there is such a thing as negative progress, sure. I, I, it's good to avoid that. We should take the best of what we have. But I'm such a big believer in the fact that things have to change to get better. You can't have things get better and them not change, because that's not what the definition of getting better is. And overwhelmingly throughout history, things are getting better. People will say, like, oh, well, it's gone to hell, hasn't it? As if that's, like, some smart take where... They're, you know, they're, they're trying to say, look, I, I know that there are issues in the world. Look how smart I am. But actually what you're doing is you're invalidating all of the progress we're making at the same time. Every measurable, um, you know, like, uh, quality of life index that you can use for people across the world, life expectancy and happiness is going up. There are people who feel worse about things, economically speaking, um... And, you know, that, like, again, feel it. But, but even to that, if you look at economic indicators themselves, they're doing pretty well. It's just people feel bad about how they are doing, which is, you know, maybe it, it is a thing worth solving. Also, this is so hard. <laughs> I can't climb this mountain. <laughs> so we're just going to have to... Uh, we'll grab some dirt and then switch the dirt out with the bed and then just stack up when we can and just try and walk in a straight line wherever we can because that's that's the best trash we got. But, yeah, I, I think... Um, the, the world is getting better. It's it's just one of my my biggest beliefs. And same with Minecraft. Like, even if you hate an update, if you really didn't like 1.21, just... Oh, 1.20, sorry. Just don't use a sniffer. Don't do archaeology. The only thing that I think you can complain about rightfully is that you didn't get better things, but you can't say it's worse than it was before. Pro, you know, again, like, it's a, it's a literal case of, yeah, everything you wanted to do before... Works just fine, maybe with the tiny exception being Neverite upgrades. Um, but everything else, it's like, um, it works the same, or it works better. That's what we should all be wanting from everything in, in the world. <laughs> Not just our Minecraft updates. And it's what we're getting, overwhelmingly. But we just don't feel like we're getting it. And I think that's uh, a big part of that, a big part of the lesson from that. So we're now going to throw an eye offender. We're roughly between two villagers. So I'm hoping it's... I think more realistically it's actually that one. So let's throw... Oh! It's Neva. It's over there in the iceberg plan. Also, please let me catch you. So, um, yeah, the fact that we're going in a straight line means that nothing has changed. Also, look at these flowers. <laughs> oh, they're, they're like oddly... They're like 2.5D. They don't seem to work entirely how you'd expect. And I think that's very quirky. Anyway, um... Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think enjoy the things in life. I think the, the problem we actually have is actually probably a problem of understanding the world. A problem of, uh, you know, like a problem of perspective to some extent. Uh, there are lots of real problems to be solved, yes, and that is important to note. While also saying that we should be grateful for the problems that we have solved. That we do have a gratitude problem of, you know, if, you, if, if there are three problems and two of your problems are solved, don't complain about the third problem more. Be grateful that two of your problems got solved. Two thirds of them. Uh, I feel like as humanity, we don't do that enough. Uh, it's something I try to practice myself. It is one of the 
healthiest things you can do for yourself. It's just think like, not try try not to think to yourself like how terrible everything is. Also, I'm gonna now grow some glowberries, I think. Because if I've got the bones out already, I might as well get that wolf, right? And so let's do it. Let's get the wolf over here. I, I, I'm assuming he's going to fall through the ground at some point. I hope not, but I assume so anyway. And now we're going to make a whole pile of bone milk and use that pile of bone milk to make some glowberries. Hey, wolf, can you come over here? Can you, you can you, can you not? <laughs> That's funny. You literally can't. Um, also, there's a fire happening in the background there. I'm going to choose to not acknowledge that. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I really think that the small things are worth appreciating too. The like right now, I am on a journey. I've just picked up a dog. It's such a small Minecraft joy, but really, it does bring you a lot of joy every time something like this happens, right? Like, oh look, he's gonna follow me around now. Um, it's a small bonus to my world, but it's a nice bonus. Also, I think it really is gonna come down to wood soon. So I only have um, warped wood. Fun fact: you can't make a boat out of the Neverwoods. They decided we should have the Strider instead. I think you can make basically everything else out of warp wood. I think it is, and, and uh, crimson wood. It's just the boat that's missing. Uh, feels a bit weird. You know what, how about I could either complain about it or I could say, wow, wasn't it cool we got a never update with two new types of wood? Even if you, even, uh, I think one of the arguments I hear against why you shouldn't do that is mostly people who like kind of enjoy uh, taking on the world's problems as their own. Something we should be looking to do. Like we should want to make the world a better place. I. I, I, I like the base idea behind that. But some people actually see it as like, uh, no, actually, you're making the world actively a worse place when you do that. Although I would say, even if that was ma if that was true, which I don't believe it is, I think that if you you looking after yourself is one of the most important things you can do for the world. It is, you know, you know the, the airplane phrase about you can't help someone with their mask till you put yours on first. Also, let's get the dog in the boat. If I've got a spare spot, you should get involved, friend. Don't go this way. I don't know why you're doing that. Come, come this way instead. Get in the boat. Where did my boat go? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where's my boat? Okay, so maybe I should be cautious of boats. I have now, I'm gonna have to break two more pieces of wood and I'm just gonna have to suck up the boat which went missing. Maybe you can't place boats this far out. Um, I'll try placing another one directly on the ice. I, I don't have high hopes this will work. Uh, but if, if I didn't do it, that would be silly. So then we'll combine the rest of the piles together to make sticks. And we'll just come on, please, please boat. Yeah, the boat works. Wonderful. And now we should have to get the dog in the boat. Is he is he going to come or... I guess I have to not sit him down. So this way, friend. Wait. There we go. This way, friend. It's good over here. Not not the rabbits. You want to get in this in this boat right here. If you can. Oh, he can. It's It's weird. But he actually can. And so now that he's in the boat, I go to sleep, which I can't do just yet. And so we sit here, maybe in entertain ourselves, fire up in the air, see if it hits me in the face. Oh, it did. That was a bad use of an arrow. <laughs> it was worth it though. Okay, into the bed. The, look how weird everything is about sleeping. Um, but yeah, I I'm going on a big journey right now. I'm gonna guess that I should just every thousand blocks or so fry an eye bender. Uh, I, I I do have a few spare, so it's better to overshoot rather than un undershoot. Um, and if we if we in, in case you're in the same boat and you don't want to use the your know, maths technique from before, so whoa, oh, 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 oh. okay, so I can see through the world right now. Um, not sure if I'm meant to be able to. But yeah, I just need to get off this. Oh, I can't get off it because of the, the rule about movement speed. So even when you're in a boat, you have to move at a certain speed for your position to update. But also when you're in a boat, things do not work smoothly. What the heck is happening right now? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to get in third person. I personally, I think we're going to have better control over the boat. And also if anything happens, I have to immediately get into third person. Uh, just immediately jump into it. Or not into third person. I have to immediately... Jump out of the boat. If the boat falls through the ground, I'm getting out of the boat. But I'm thinking the boat probably has a lower chance of falling through the world than I do. Although we did see one kind of just vanish earlier, so maybe not the best of dreams. In the meantime, look at this. A shipwreck. He crashed into a boat. This is the Titanic, therefore. And looking aboard the Titanic, I think we'll see there is a, a treasure map. 
Do the treasure maps work this far out, do you think? Oh, it does. That's fun. I I can't imagine any useful way. And I but I, I like the idea. You know, what? I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. I like the idea. I hope it goes well. And uh, I also hope that the the run in general goes well. I'm I'm now about a thousand blocks away, so I'm gonna find a nice clear patch over here. I'm gonna jump out of the boat, leave the dog <laughs> moving the wrong direction, and then throw an eye offender. Oh, we've gone really far on... Oh, no, we haven't. We're in the right correct, correct coordinates. So now we're going to throw an eye offender, see where it takes us. Still forwards. See, now I know the next time if one does point me backwards, I at least know that it was past 3,600 on the X. Um, and basically, that's the goal of throwing an eye offender every 1,000 blocks or so. If you do ever have one that points you back, you know it won't be that far backwards. It'll be at most, uh, you know, 980 blocks or something. And so now we go on a very long voyage. Oh, no, boat. Oh, oh, whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> so boats do not work correctly, and I should not be trying my luck. But you know me if you watch this channel. Trying my luck and doing silly things I probably shouldn't is, uh, you know, if I didn't do that, would I even be myself? Um, so, yeah, if you go too fast every now and then, the boat breaks, and then you and the dog get out of the boat, and then you can get back in. That, oh, a polar bear. That makes perfect sense. I, I, I'm not gonna question it. I don't know why anyone would question it. So yeah, if we go diagonally, it gets especially bad, I imagine. Oh no, things are fine. We're, we've not gone out of the boat in a while. So I've now got another thousand blocks since my last eye offender. Oh no, I haven't. I'm gonna go back in time. Oh, <laughs> I've worked out a time travel bug in Minecraft. It takes me back in time to when I was lost in a boat because the boat breaks. Oh, maybe it doesn't break. Maybe that's the wrong wrong phrasing for it. So we've now gone 4,800 blocks since the um, since the big ancient city. And I'm going to have to assume there's no stronghold underneath an ice sheet. But maybe that's... A oh, there's a monument down there. So I have to really hope. Um, oh, yeah, there is. That That's fun. And instead, I'm going to just hope that it's in at least the next biome over. Also, is that an igloo? What is that? Oh, it's just an iceberg. I really want to get out of here for my own camera's sanity because this is a bit painful. So that was great. Let's break the boat using my hoe, actually. There we go. Wonderful. And let's go on a voyage. Maybe on the ocean regular. Just for a second. After we throw an eye offender, of course. Um, I've traveled some blocks in the wrong direction. I'm going to just throw it kind of that way and see where we go. Still straight forwards is a bad sign because I traveled like oh, 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 oh. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yeah, still straight forwards is a very bad sign. My, my math said 2,000 blocks and we're now approaching uh, 6,000 or we're going to be heading towards 6,000. So we might be going for a really long journey right now. But that's okay. I I think that's something I'm willing to accept is in in this challenge... I've had a lot of things that have been about, can I survive? Can I do this? And so a part of me is like, oh, but it'd be fun if this was just over and done. You're in the big fight. But also having a challenge that's about endurance mixed in there, it would challenge me in a different way. It would give me something else uh, to keep focused on, which is good. Ultimately, you know, I'm playing Minecraft to have fun. Oh, my dog didn't come with me. Well, he was fun while he lasted. Um, and I guess I'm going to pick up my boat. So let's get out of here. Okay, let's use blocks to get out of here, because otherwise I'm not going to. And then uh, let's go see what we've got in this tiger biome. So, surprisingly unbroken, right? Also, oh, look, it's a baby wolf. Okay, I want him. I, I'm a bad owner for wanting this, but okay, I can't. I have to feed him to full health first. Oh, no, I don't. Baby dog. <laughs> Cute. Okay, so I don't know if he's going to defend me the same as a normal wolf, but I have him, and that's that's good enough for me. Sometimes that's all you need in life. Oh, a, a, a full adult wolf too. Should we go into the end with a, with a wolf farmy? I can't imagine it will help me much. But sometimes it's better to have the help that you know than the help that you don't. That's uh, that's that's some life advice that I'm not sure that we can trust. But I'm going to use it anyway. And we're going to keep on walking this way into the, into the tiger until we get to like, I don't know, 5,800 or something. Just far enough in that I know I should throw an eye offender. 
I hope that we're not going for hours and hours. In fact, you know, looking at this section, how long I've been going for. But I'm feeling right now like this is the start of a long journey. I, I'm glad I ate the noodles. I'd be like getting a bit hangry uh, in the next 20, 30 minutes if I hadn't. Um, yeah, hangry's bad, by the way. I do, do have to say, uh, not, not ideal. Uh, no, no one wants to be mad with people, especially not mad with themselves or mad at anything really. I, I think being angry is like the least desirable human state. I have no idea why people like actively like get themselves into it on purpose. Like, you know, this is, this is, this is a thing we should be avoiding. Not a thing we should be like goading out of ourselves. But yeah, that's just my personal views. Anyway, let's uh, throw a knife ender. I've got 16 and I'm sure. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. 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 Don't break. Don't break. Okay, it broke. I've still got three spares, plus some blaze powder, so. Oh, plus an, I, I, an ender pearl. So it's somewhere between about 4,800 and 5,600. There's a uh, there's a fun scanning technique. Oh no, no, okay. <laughs> there's a fun scanning technique. I forget what it's called, but the easiest way to check something that seems like a very big distance is to cut it down in half. Do you know a fun fact that the distance, if you folded a paper in half, um, 42 times, it would go all the way to the moon. That's a real thing. I'll show you some some proof on screen, hopefully, because it's it sounds like the sort of thing that someone would just make up at a pub somewhere. But um, yeah, it would go all the way to the moon. And it's because doubling, like, exponential is crazy. So you can take advantage of the same thing by halving something. If you want to make something much smaller, such as the distance you have to search for a stronghold, keep on halving it, and you, you can do that in a straight line by... Finding the halfway point, throwing an eye offender, then find your new halfway point, throw an eye offender, and if you do it enough times, you'll find a near certainty of where your village is. Uh, or, or rather, where your stronghold is. Usually it's below a village, but today, I guess, out in the Nearlands, we're doing this Java style, just having a random eye offender somewhere in the world. So we're going, oh no! Why is this here? <laughs> okay, so I still have the. Uh, Elder Guardian effect, but it's just banished. Okay, no I don't. And thankfully I've got good armor. Um, and also the ability to get out of that. If that was a bigger cave, can you imagine a run ending that way? I really, I really can't. Also, there's water here. So, this is actually a, a health hazard now. I'm gonna just quickly grab some dirt if I can. Yeah, I'm gonna get that dirt, please. Put it there. Jump on the dirt. Move up here, and I am out. Just about. Oh, scary. <laughs> that That is something I've got to be careful of. This has happened to me enough times in Minecraft, looking so far forward that you don't notice what is in front of you. Um, bad, bad thing to do. Would not recommend. So now we're at about 5360. Let's throw another eye offender. Not glow berries. Although, eat glow berries. Just fun. And then throw an eye offender. It's forwards. So, it's gonna be under this lake somewhere. Oh, no, no, I have to get that. I have to get that. It's gonna be under the lake somewhere. And also, it's way to the right. So, I think we should head back towards... Oh, to the right, actually. Oh, yeah, that's weird. So, I have to just slowly... I'm gonna grab my boat, actually. I'm gonna just swim this way. And then go get that. Get in the boat. And then somewhere between 5300 and 4800, we're gonna throw an eye offender. So, I think we'll just get to the edge of the iceberg biome, just for my own sanity. And we'll also do it from, like, over here. Yeah, if we follow the, the line that it took, we'll be good. And again, by continuously halving this distance, we'll eventually know where to dig down. Uh, I'm worried about what digging down looks like at this point, so, I mean, I'm just gonna keep on hoping. But for now, let's do this again. I offender. Oh, it's backwards now. So it's somewhere between 53... Oh, no, 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 no. I need, I need to get that. I need to get that. Don't fall through the world. I think it fell through the world. I think I just lost an eye offender. And I'm, I'm glad I brought the spares. If you thought I was being overly cautious, then now you know why. <laughs> so halfway in between these two, I'm just going to go by eyeball on this one, is about here, right? So fry an eye offender. And it's taking me that way some more. Okay. It's so now halfway between these two. Please give me that. Okay. So halfway between these two points, here and there, is where it will be. It seems crazy to me, but let's go for it. So throw another one. And now it's that way. Wait, I, are these eye fenders going in the same direction? Is it pointing me to a different stronghold now? Okay, so we'll just, we'll just go closer to the shore. 
Throw one more. Okay, it's back that way. It's underneath the water. Uh, around here somewhere. I don't have any more details than that. I'll, all I can do is place my bed. Make sure I've got my spawn point set somewhere useful. <laughs> and then, okay. Yeah, watch out for those. And just start digging down. Or we could store the quilts and dig down from dry land. I think that makes more sense. Also, turtles go so slow, they cannot move in this world. Something I find funny, personally. But yeah, so we've got our docks. That's the good news. I've got a bed. And I just need to know that my boat is how far away from me. I'm at five. In fact, I just know the coordinates of the boat. It's roughly where I've got to be. It's at 364-2984. So 364-2984. We'll just dig down to get there. I should have probably got the diamonds from earlier. A diamond shovel would go very hard right now. But since I don't have a diamond shovel or a diamond sword, or the iron to make another pickaxe if it comes to it. Um, also, yeah, bedtime. Need to sleep through the night. Doing this at night time is just a, a layer of stress I don't think I should have. We'll set up some torches, actually. Just in case these come in important. Stop some mob from sneaking down the tunnel and destroying me in the back when I least expect it. Also the tunnel itself, maybe. Um, place these next to the bed just for decoration. And now let's let's do it. I have a little bit of skepticism about whether there is a stronghold down there. I don't know why it is. The eye offenders have pointed me to it. But I just it just doesn't feel right. Do you, do you know what I mean? You probably don't. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm so used to digging down, spending forever, and then realizing, oh no, this wasn't right. That I just feel like that's going to happen here. Maybe wrongfully. But it's just, it's what I feel like. And I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that is uh, undue uh, paranoia of some form. But I also, I, you know, I, I've been through some stuff. Also kidding out. Making a staircase is a bad idea. We have to actually have staircase blocks. Because otherwise we won't be able to get in or out. That's another useful lesson. Let's make sure that it's tall enough for that and has the actual spaces for it. But yeah, we need to dig down. And use whatever block we can get our hands on first. Oh, there's sand's gonna fall in here. <laughs> That's bad, is what I will say now. So we'll grab some sandstone. And then I'll use the sandstone to patch in the hole. Oh, that's not sand. That's, oh, that's sand, not sandstone. Then we'll dig down some more. Place a torch over there. And dig down even more than that. And just continuously go until we get to what? So, oh, man, come on. You can't, can't just keep flooding me with sandstone. It's not very polite of you. So dig down from this. Oh, the ocean is going down deeper than I am. So we have to continuously replace the ceiling with more sandstone blocks. All this will keep happening. So back there is some sandstone we need. And now we can get rid of that. We can actually start digging, maybe. No, no, there's, there's so much sand. I, it makes sense that we're under an ocean. But I'm still somehow surprised. <laughs> um... Anyone else ever feel that about the world sometimes? Like, I know that I have no no right to be surprised. But also, I still would like to be. Um, you know, I, I feel like we all need that in life. The, 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 you know, accepting that there are some things that are counterintuitive, uh, counterintuitive and just feel wrong. And so they're harder to accept. And if you can, I, I think when you can know something about yourself, you can fix it much better. Like, uh, I, I, you know, I have a friend who uh, is very, very bad about sharing food, but not like by thinking about it, just they're like, oh yeah, I just, it's just by instinct, we, you know, like there's a, you, you would never share a thing that way. I think, I think a lot of people by default, it's like, yeah, sharing, sharing food's a thing you have to like work up into. I think you have enough, um, I, I think you have a lot of people in your, or maybe like trust as a whole, I would say. It's not something you're in, like a lot of people who aren't trusting, aren't doing it out of some like, oh yeah, I've been hurt before. Although, you know, that's a valid thing too. I think a lot of people are just also like, yeah, I I don't see why you would trust people because, you know, like uh, there's lots lots of ways that trust can be abused or taken. Why would you open yourself up for it? And uh, which is kind of sad when you say it out loud. But like they're not even trying to distrust people. They just assume it's the default, which, you know, uh, it, it, but I, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice thing to be able to trust someone with your food or your Minecraft life. And I, I trust you watching right now. Um, even though I'm having a little bit of a tiny off-topic moment, I trust that you have gone through something 
similar and that you're enjoying these vibes of like, yeah, you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm digging down to the stronghold. And rather than staying perfectly on topic, I trust that you would enjoy uh, a little discussion on the ethics of, of trust and why and how and where we do. Also, whoa! <laughs> it is here. I didn't trust, but I should have trusted. The eye offender knows what he's doing. And this is my first time going into a stronghold on these in this part of the world. Um, I I do not know what I, I do have no idea what I should be expecting. Um, but I guess first things first, let's free up some inventory space. I'm gonna dump out the garbage in the first chest I find and just hope that I don't really need to uh, do too much. Uh, we do have a real concern, especially as you get further out, the strongholds tend not to have end portals. There was a really cool seed that I found recently that just had a five room end portal and it's like, oh, five room stronghold. And it's like, yeah, the end portal didn't generate. Life was over, it was ruined. Uh, it's, a, it's a very valuable thing to know about bedrock strongholds is they don't all have an end portal there is a point where it is worth actually giving up. And you know, you, usually it's like, never give up. But when, when sometimes there are moments where it is worth giving up. And in Minecraft, you need to know the giving up point, I guess. Which funnily enough, when you think about it, is one of those valuable life lessons. People say never give up. But actually the correct skill is know when to give up. Oh, I can't get my torches back. Once I, can I break the block below them? Oh, I can. So that's how I get torches back if I need them. Because the torches are 2D, like I literally can't see them from the side angle. <laughs> Look at that. There's no torch there. It's just a magic light block. So weird. Um, but yeah, the correct skill in life is knowing when to give up. Some people say persistence is key to everything. I would say uh, the real key to everything is knowing how many rooms it takes to go from, oh, oh, and knowing where the loot is and where the free ender pearls are. Uh, the real thing in life is knowing how persistent to be. Some people are too persistent and hold on to something for too long. Some people are the opposite. Try not to be either. Um, that's the real, that's, it's a much harder lesson to tell people about. Cause it's like, yeah, sometimes you need to try harder and sometimes you need to try less hard. Sometimes it needs a bit more, sometimes it needs a bit less. We, we would much rather have an easy lesson of like, yeah, what you do is this. Just this, oh, what, this one thing, just go through the one place. This is, this is amazing. Uh, I am very pleased with this. I just have to destroy the silverfish spawner. Um, I hope they can't wriggle towards me right now. I don't think they can. Yeah, he just vanished. He literally just vanished. And here we are. How many of my 49 offenders do I need? I know it's at least not one based on what I saw over there. Ah, oh, I got, I killed four unnecessary endermen. I, I feel, you know, what a waste. What a waste of my time and effort. So let's eat some glowberries. Let's uh, throw some eye offenders in. And consider what we actually need for the fight. Oh, that's scary. I'll do this from the outside, actually. Ooh, this... I don't like this a lot, actually. But from the outside is a valid way to fill in a portal. I hope my dog doesn't get burnt in lava. And now we can go in. There's no way a mob can sneak me into the, the lava. Worst case, it sneaks me into the end. Also, wait. Is that water out there? Are we underwater right now? I think we might be. Um, let's find out. So I'm going to go for a quick swim. You have to swim left and right and then later swim in the direction you want to go. So I'm going. Let me swim. Let me swim. <laughs> I can't swim that way for some reason. Okay, let's just patch that in. We're in some form of hole. I don't know what it is. I, if you want to check this out later, the seed is everything. Uh, it's my let's play seed. These are the coordinates. Go find it out. I would love to know. Um, after this, if I, if I don't feel terrible about the seed, maybe I'll even do so myself. But yeah, for now... We are almost ready for phase five. This fourth phase that I was so worried about, it was 40 minutes, which is way longer than you want to spend looking for a portal. Way, way longer. But it was fine, right? I think we didn't have a big disaster. And so now there's only one moment left for a big disaster. And it's in the end. I'm going to put something away in a chest. I don't know what, like um, my spare diamond hoe, just in case, you know, the worst happens. And I need to come back here. So we'll go back to the chest. Oh, the chest was somewhere else. I guess what we'll do is we'll place some sand. So I know to go up there. And then I think we don't, we don't need any other instructions past that point. I guess I'll just make a chest out here. Or I could throw it on the ground. The future me, go find this diamond hoe and these diamond leggings. Oh, I shouldn't throw items on the ground. They sometimes go missing if I do that. I am going to make myself a golden chest plate. It seems silly. I... 
cannot say there are many times where I'd recommend a gold chest plate. This is one of those times, though. <laughs> Look how much armor it gave me, even though it's like the second worst set. Um, we are going to just turn this all into bone meal. Turn, uh, get rid of the torch slot. Get rid of the hoe here, honestly. Uh, oh, I never used the saddle. All that effort to get one, and I didn't see a single horse. The boat did me more more value than the saddle did. Uh, the bow is going to be necessary. The twisting vines could be a lifesaver. Yeah, I think I'll grab those. And then some cobblestone, because you always need a block. And then replace this with that. I'm ready to go. Let's jump into the end. I'm excited about this one. Oh, is the game excited? So here's the fun thing. The end is actually a fairly normal fight. I believe, I have no reason not to believe that this should be a chill enough thing where we, we shoot some stuff, we go pew pew pew, the dragon dies. That's how I believe this fight is about to go. I hope that I'm not mistaken, because if I am, I'm gonna have to learn on the fly and yeah, that's 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 something important to do too. But yeah, I also need to make sure I have a bucket and it's not got lava and it's just got lava. And I should have filled it with water while I was in the stronghold. Water can actually save my life. Lava can just hurt me. So now, ooh, okay. We're gonna avoid the dragon. And I'm gonna make sure actually, before we take down any of these towers, because that is valuable, I'm gonna make sure we get the dragon's uh, weak spot activated. Obviously very weird part of the dragon. Oh, wow. This is a very strange end. But yeah, if you shoot her with a projectile through the neck, um, hopefully that activates it. No, we haven't. We haven't done it. We've tried that again. Uh, so I'm just going to shoot some arrows in such a way that we can pick them up later and use them to do good things. And now we're going to go pick up those arrows, which were flaming, by the way. I wonder why. Pick up the flaming arrows and hope that we've got a little bit of a critical thing going on. And now we're going to attack the towers that the dragon is nearest. Uh, oh, we missed that terribly. In such a way that we can do extra damage to her with them. This is very scary. I'm going to make sure I heal up, by the way. At any moment, a Enderman could attack. And I'm going to be very grateful. Oh, wait, what? No! Why? Dragon! Okay, this this was just a fun, you know, get a, get a big fight done. It's a scary fight. But, you know, this was more a formality. This was a polite meeting of minds. Now you're going down, dragon. This is personal. This is not okay. You know, there's there's a lot of things that you can do in your Minecraft world. You know, this is your domain. I understand that. I'm just a visitor. But also, that's 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 out of order. That's, oh, speaking of out of order, I think I might have an angry Enderman. I've got two angry Endermen, in fact. Um, so I don't have a solution to angry Enderman. I just know that I can crouch. And I will... Okay, so... We're gonna have to just, we're gonna have to just attack them. Oh, okay. We're going to have to attack them. Um, I don't, I need to drink the regen potion. I need to drink the regen potion. Uh, right now, let's go. Um, if, if, if not now, then when, I guess is the question about that. Let's get back into the center. Let's eat maybe some food to get some extra regen. Right after doing our extra damage to the dragon. And there we go, two towers down. On bedrock, you don't need to take all the towers down, by the way, or I'd be much more nervous about my arrow count. And indeed, wasting one on shooting myself earlier. Instead, we're just slowing down her healing with these, which is honestly a noble enough task. Uh, and indeed, speeding up the kill if we can do it right. So get another potion in the hotbar, and in we fly. I can. It's fun that I can attack her from, from the top there. Oh no, I can't. You literally cannot. I am. I am. I've worked out a way to kill myself. I think. Um, instead, we'll just attack with our fist, finish off with the sword, and that is very strange, by the way. That is very very strange. Grab another potion. Realize we've got seven arrows left, so we might as well make some big shots for ones like that. Ooh, so close. Okay, we got it down. So now the dragon will do much less healing between bouts, and we might, ooh, if we're lucky, just get her down and one more one more blow. I am going to avenge you, wolf. I missed, oh, actually, let's, let's finish her while she's in the sky. I've got seven arrows. I can do this. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, she's come down already. See, wow, what a smooth dragon fight. Oh, no, never mind. She's not. Okay, okay. What a smooth dragon fight. Nothing went wrong there. I'm going to regenerate. I'm just going to go for everything I can. 
so that I can officially say that Phase 5 was successful and I've officially beaten Minecraft when starting in the Nearlands. This is a victory over the Ender Dragon that I'd like to dedicate, of course, to my late dog. He was there for a lot of it and honestly, I uh, do think it's a shame that he couldn't make it all the way. He'd be so happy with me right now and uh, given the great moments that we had over the last 10 or so minutes, I know it's not just me who's going to have a hard time living without the unnamed dog and so if you have a favorite moment and you'd like to pay your respects by talking about it, please do so in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you made it this far and you enjoyed this and want to see more, make sure that you do subscribe. Uh, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next weird survival challenge on the channel soon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!